Clerk, call the roll. Councilman Casarelli. Here. DePena. Here. Graciano. Here. Notori. Here. Ravel. Here. Strimmel Burke. Present. Mayor Mohem. Here. Just to uh, let everybody know, our, our official township clerk is not here today. Our deputy is stepping in. She has big shoes to fill, but we know she can do it. Sunshine note. Requirements of an Open Public Meetings Act. Notice of this meeting was published in Thursday's July 1st, 2021 editions of the Belleville Times and Star Ledger. A copy of the annual meeting notice has been posted to the Belleville Town Hall Bulletin Board, and copies are on file in the Municipal Clerk's Office. Uh, yeah, I'm just looking at the rest of the notice. Next on our agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. To our right. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, with liberty and justice for all. Next up, we have presentations. The first item is the Belleville baseball team. We did just shut the door and lock them in the meeting. <laughs> A baseball team could be a little loud, so we had to shut the uh, the door initially. Go down and read from there. Just make sure we speak into that microphone if we can. Good. We're going to invite the baseball team up. Come on right up, guys. You're going to be right here in the front, okay? They all got quiet all of a sudden. As they're coming in, we're going to have our deputy mayor, Ms. Naomi DePena, read a proclamation. She's going to be assisted by Councilman Graziano. No, you can wait for them to come in. I'm just narrating them. Oh. I'm just narrating what's happening. Yes. Thank you to all the parents who brought your children out today. I'm going to hand it down to uh, Deputy Mayor DePena to read the proclamation. Great. Resolved by the Municipal Council of Belleville, New Jersey. Whereas the Belleville High School 2021 baseball team won the High School Development League Championship in the 16U Division. And whereas the mayor and municipal find it fitting to honor these young men of the Belleville High School 2021 baseball team who have displayed their dedication, commitment, and perseverance, and through their efforts, did an outstanding job and are richly deserving of congratulations. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the mayor and municipal council of Township of Belleville recognize the excellence and devotion exhibited by Belleville High School 2021 baseball team players Jake Santos, Alan Martinez, Derek Gonzalez. It's okay, you can shout for them, Mama. Do it. <laughs> Derek Gonzalez, AJ, AJ Clinigan, Brian Polanco, Dominic Groleman, Gabe Bayan, Aiden Carrero, Rafi Matos, James Monroy, Gabriel Santiago, Joe Gansion, Marino Perez, Luis de Leon, and Arianzi Paulino, as well as their coaches, Albert Carrero and Albert Santos. And be it further resolved that the mayor and municipal council of the Township of Belleville commend the Belleville High School 2021 baseball team, high school summer development league 16U division champions, and wish continued success in the years to come to its team players and coaches. Congratulations. <laughs> Each one of you guys are Just going to try and gather everybody to pose for a picture if we can. Don't cut my head off. Okay. 
Looks good. One more round of applause, then. That's you're right, by the way. You're right. Now I know why you read it. Because I would have one never dared to say the name. And you read every name. And... Listen, their parents are. She scared. messed up the one Italian name. Of course I did, right? I, I was talking about that. Right? I knew it. We're just going to give them a minute or so to exit the room. I'm not sure they want to stay in this heat box that we're all in right now. Thank you. Thank you again. That was a good half. That was one minute notice. Those of you who are watching on, on video, it is extremely hot in this room, and it's about 10 yeah. degrees cooler than it was two hours ago when we had about 60 people in here for 12 different promotions. So the room is cooling down. It's still very warm, though. Just going to ask, yep, we are shutting that door. Good. Okay, the next item on our agenda is another presentation to the family of Thomas McKerney, and I believe Councilman Graziano, uh, Councilman Casarelli has that one. Yes, thank you, Mayor. Uh, uh, yeah, unfortunately, last week, Belleville and Nutley lost a great, great man, uh, Tom McHenry. Uh, he was both, he represented both Belleville and Nutley in, you know, different capacities working in Nutley, but he always, he always took care of Belleville. He was the chairman of the uh, Nutley Irish Parade, but every year for the last dozen years, there was a uh, Belleville honorees in the parade. So he always, uh, always did the right thing, always took care of Belleville and Nutley. And uh, we just have a little proclamation here for his uh, friends and family. So whereas the township of Belleville lost a former resident, Thomas McHenry, when he departed this life on September 5th, 2021, Tom was born and raised in Belleville and lived in Nutley for over 30 years. Tom was employed by the Township of Nutley since 2001 and was the loving father of two, three children who always came first. Tom was the president of the Nutley Irish American Association for the past 15 years and was a trustee of the association for 16 years. During his presidency of the Nutley Irish, Tom grew the organization into one of the largest in the state with the number of members doubling in size during his leadership. Tom also had the distinguished honor of being chosen by Insider New Jersey as one of New Jersey's top Irish American leaders. Whereas Thomas McHenry is survived by his children and his family, Sarah McHenry, Thomas McHenry, Colleen McHenry, Maureen McNish, Joe McNish, and Philomena McHenry Salgado. Tom is also survived by his soulmate, Colleen Nielsen. Therefore, be it resolved that the Mayor and Municipal Council of the Township of Belleville, on behalf of his citizens, hereby extends its sincere condolences to his bereaved family on their great loss. So if someone wants to come up and get the plaque and say a few words. Also, also the Nutley Irish is uh, accepting uh, donations in their charity in, in memory of Tom and his name. So if anyone ever cares to make uh, a donation to the Nutley Irish in his name, it's going to go to scholarships and a few different things around uh, Belleville and Nutley. Um, we just can't tell you how much we appreciate this amazing honor and it puts us all at rest knowing that Uncle Tommy to me and Brother Tommy to Joe here, um, that he was such an influence in all of our lives and we should all live by his example, which is to be grateful for every single breath, every single moment, and every single day. So we just appreciate this so much and we know that he's looking down on all of us tonight and is so proud of this honor as well as all of the honors he had in his life. Okay, so next item on our agenda is, uh, unfortunately, it is well, they're all going, so. uh, the next item on our agenda is executive session. Uh, we were originally scheduled to go into executive session for two different topics that the manager put on. That was personnel and contract negotiations. However, we're only going into executive session for the contract negotiations, correct? That's correct. The personnel matter will be discussed in public when executive session is over. Correct or no? That's correct. Yes. Okay, so I need a motion to 
enter executive session. Unfortunately, I do need to clear the room. Second. We have a motion made and second for executive session. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Casarino. Yes. De Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Natari. Ravel. Yes. Schimmelberg. Yes. Mayor Malham. Yes. We just check. Sure. Sure. A little unique situation. Uh, we went, uh, we had posted, let me do it this way. We had posted our agenda that we had two different conversations to be had while we were in executive. Those conversations were both, uh, one was personnel and two was contract negotiations. As most of you know that are here and anybody watching online, live or later, typically matters of personnel are always discussed in executive session. There's a procedure that has to be followed by the government we are advised by uh, our manager and our attorney how to do that. Uh, anytime personnel is, is happening in executive session, those employees have a right to know they're being discussed. And two, they have the option to whether or not that conversation happens in executive session or happens in during the public meeting. So this is new territory for me and new territory, I think, for everybody up here. But we're basically taking a discussion that was going to be done in executive session, which was personnel, and those employees have asked us to have that conversation in public. It's a little odd because we're gonna have this conversation with members of the public here and with a camera going and with people watching on TV, but you have to understand this is a conversation in and between us and our uh, administration, our, our professionals. So bear with us because before we go into the next portion of the agenda, which is discussions, we still have a matter of personnel to deal with, and it will be discussed here in public. So without further ado, I'm going to now hand it over to the manager. And again, this is uncharted territory for us all, so just bear with us. I'm going to hand it over to the town manager. Sure. So uh, members of the council, um, Mark and I were uh, asked to review the developer's escrow account. Uh, which is kept down in the finance department and processed by the finance department. Upon the initial review of the reviewing of the escrow account, we saw that um, there was a conflict of three employees receiving compensation based on being reimbursed for attending meetings, uh, which uh, there is no, um, there's no public authorization via ordinance or resolution to reimburse. Um, so we went back, uh, and again, the review is not completed yet, but we started going back, I think we're back maybe two years at this point, doing um, totals as far as how many checks were issued out of the escrow account that may have been and could continue to be in conflict with a uh, ordinance and a resolution. There is a resolution that this governing body passed on uh, August of 2019 that resolution specifically identifies uh, whether it's, it's the construction official zoning officer and acting in the capacity of planning director, uh, a, a stipend that this, this governing body passed and uh, issued a, a stipend, I'm just gonna round off numbers, say $670 a month, $17,000 a year. So that, that is by resolution that those monies are to be paid to the construction official. Um, besides that, there have been re uh, it checks issued for attending meetings. So that resolution of 2000. Can I just, of can I just jump in for one second? This is a, just so members of the council know, this is a conversation. So you had mentioned reimbursement. Uh, I've seen probably what you've seen. I, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's being reimbursed. It, I, I thought it was being billed for services rendered. In, not, invoices, not, invo invoices submitted that uh, invoices submitted for meetings attended. If that's, I use the word reimbursed. Definitely not reimbursed. reimbursement. Okay. Um, I stand reimbursement, you lay money out, you get paid back. Okay, so I stand to be corrected. So invoices were submitted to the finance department, uh, which those invoices were paid out of the escrow account, which there is no um, tool, there's no resolution, there's no ordinance to pay 
uh, a secretary to attend a work meeting or the construction official to attend uh, special meetings or work meetings. Just a quick question. Are these regular meetings or special meetings? So the resolution, specific, the res of August of 2019, specifically identifies all meetings, okay? Right. So the compensation, the additional compensation to the construction official is based on the resolution to attend all meetings. But the... So to sum up, the resolution says specifically special, let's just say special planning board meetings, subcommittee meetings. The resolution says you're being compensated 17,000 plus for those meetings, Correct. yet you're telling me invoices have been typed up and money has been withdrawn for the same exact meetings. Invoices have been submitted to the finance department. Checks, checks issued, have been issued out of the for the escrow same account. exact the meetings, escrow account. For That's the correct. same exact meeting that we already know is being paid through uh, an extra stipend. That's it. Sounds serious to me. Again, how, how um, serious do you think it is? I don't know because we're Mark and I are still reviewing the whole. So I, again, part part of our later conversation is to correct some of the procedures that aren't being followed. Agreed. And I think when we get to that portion of the meeting and realize that um, via past practice or whatever the result may be, we need to, uh, and when I say we, we have to include the planning board and the zoning board, we need to make some, some corrections, obviously. So, so based on past practice, we've been doing this for a while. I, I don't know how far back, but we're back probably, I know for sure, two years, maybe three, four, five. That's what we're going to find. Yeah. That's what the review is going to show us. No, I, I kind of remember that myself over time, that that's what we kind of did. But So the practice that I'd like to see is that we pay somebody for a service, and they don't go and take additional money for the same service. I mean, that's, I think, the practice that I'd like to see. I mean, I don't. I think we, I don't I think we care all... much about past practice if it was wrong. No, no, I, like, but, but we approve, you can't go back and say, hey, we did this, we approved this, and it was okay. The auditors saw it, they were okay with it, our CFO was okay with it. Well, I don't think we approved invoices. <clears throat> well, our, CF, our CFO did. Theoretically, that was the person in charge, and our auditors did look at that. Got so if we, need to, if we need to clarify from this point on, that's a whole other trip. That, well, you know, that's a question. That's, that's a question to me. That's a question. Does the money come out of? Uh, comes out of escrow. So the, is the escrow signed off by the CFO or is it signed off by who? Anthony's name is on the check. CFO's name is checked on yeah, the check. Yeah, so just so that we clearly paint the, the correct picture of what took place, because certainly I don't want anyone to, to point a finger at, at, at uh, Kim. The procedure that's in place or was in place up until this initial review was that professionals, secretaries, construction officials would take an invoice and submit it to the finance department who matched it up to the meeting or to the development and those checks were issued with a stamp. Now this practice has been going on before we had uh, Judith. Joe was in charge of the, the escrow account so then if I'm, and again, the review is not totally complete because I haven't even spoken to Judith, but I'm going to tell you, Joe was doing it, right? Joe was, we, never, we didn't have a CFO, we didn't have a full-time CFO. So at one point, Joe was in charge. Then, yeah, but you don't know how long this goes back. I do not. So being that Joe was here or not here wouldn't matter if it only started, say, in the last two years or so, or a year or so. If the review says that it only started in the last two years, absolutely. I, I, I as you know, I filed an open request. Uh, a review is pretty easy. I mean, you, you just look. It's, I had sent you an email three weeks ago. I, I, what, what is the review process? What, I mean, it's very easy for me. I, I, I filed an OPA request and I could see. So what, what more time or what's the next step? I, I, don't, I don't want to put a time limit on it, but I think when we get to the next topic, which we're keeping the topic separate and I have no problem keeping the topic separate, but I think when we get to the next topic, it's going to be quite clear that bills are being paid without proper authorization. And, and again, or, or go ahead. without proper authorization implies like the bills are okay to be paid. There's just no authorization. No, I, didn't I say think that. we're talking about something a little different that no, I didn't say inappropriately that. being invoiced and inappropriately being paid. Mm. It's, a, it's a big difference. 
Okay. Yeah, Mayor, if I may, um, I had a question in regards to that. It, it, it kind of aligns with what he's saying. I mean, I'm a small business owner, and I think of it as if I'm paying someone their salary, and they're also billing. That's what I'm understanding, right? Yes. They're billing for the same services that they've already rendered. Um, now, we're, is there anywhere in, in the ordinance where it mentions a limit of, of meetings where people may have been under the impression that they had a limit and after that they can bill after that? No. So the, uh, and I refer to it as the ordinance that this council passed in August of 2019, mm -hmm. specifically identifies all the meetings and it says that. Solution. It's a I'm resolution. Sorry, I apologize. It's a re that is the resolution. A resolution. Okay. There is an ordinance that is prior so to that, that refers to things that are not being done. That ordinance goes back to, I could give you the date. I have a copy of it somewhere. But it's a very old ordinance. Give me a second, I can tell you. That ordinance goes back to... Hmm. I mean, I don't think I need the time. Yeah, I believe 1978. And, I, and again, that's part of the review is going to tell us. And again, what the ordinance of, and let's just round it off, what that ordinance says is not being done. And I think that's that's the procedures for the next me. part we're going to adjust. So there's, it's, it's really for anybody that's paying attention, uh, listening or watching here, it, it's fairly, in my opinion, it's fairly black and white. We have a resolution authorizing a stipend. That stipend is for X, Y, and Z services, including X, Y, and Z meetings, including specifically saying after hour meetings. That stipend is $17,000 and change. That employee is receiving that stipend, but that employee is still creating invoices, walking them down to the finance department, and taking money for the same meetings he is already being paid despite the stipend for. In a nutshell, correct me if I misspoke. No, the, the, the initial review clearly shows that, yes. Okay. That's, I mean, that's pretty troubling. I don't know why more people aren't outraged at that, but it's, it's pretty troubling. You know, it just sounds like to me that there's been some miscommunication here. And, and yeah, we need to, miscommunication. And, and Michael, let, let, me, let me finish, please. Yeah. We need to clarify it and make sure that it doesn't happen again. I mean, the whole point for me is Next if, we, if, we, if we've identified a problem, then we need to find that problem and find a way to move forward. Typing up an invoice for something you already did, walking it downstairs, uh, I, getting a check is not a miscommunication. But if we've been doing this for, for years, I and this is the it. way it's been doing it, I you know, then, and, and we've been doing it for at least two years, so. We? Yeah, we, we're part of this whole puzzle. Oh, I am not part I mean, of this you know, puzzle. You're not, no, you're not part of anything that takes responsibility. No, because Let's be serious. I'm actually you just take credit, no responsibility. Right, and, and speaking of taking credit, thank you for teeing that up. And, and oh, by the way, let's take credit for the fourth phase of the stadium project, which is not the first phase of the stadium project. Why not? Well, like, you know, this, this is what Can we stick to this yeah. topic? Yeah, let's so, stick to it. Thanks. Talking about responsibility, Councilman, I will take responsibility for first looking into this matter. I will take responsibility for providing the information to the manager, and I will take responsibility for us uncovering what we've uncovered. You want to call it past practice for some strange reason. You want to say I'm we've not, always I'm, done I'm it that way. No, you, you did reason. say that. You we, did say we've that. We've been doing this. Oh, so you know, it's, it's okay. It's, it's something. It's something. Are you on the record that it's okay? Then we've been doing it wrong. Okay, we're going to say now it's wrong. So let's let's figure it out. Getting paid twice. Forward. Getting paid twice is wrong. It's just I, wrong. You know, no, can't say it. Get on the record. Mike, on the record is, if we've made a mistake as a Wait. township, then we need to correct it. Okay. You know, if, if you want to go after somebody in particular, so that's your prerogative. Let me if you want to go after somebody in particular, that's your prerogative, and you've been doing this for freaking three years. Got it. So stop So it. many, many years ago, when our recreation director, many years ago, was taking money out of a fund, uh, was that a mistake? Was that a miscommunication? Well, by the way, he created that fund, and he created an account, and that's how he did it. Right, but was that a it's miscommunication? Not, it's not the same thing. It's, oh, it's not. definitely not the same thing. All right, so this is stuff that we've, we've basically had supervision over through so our CFO. Being that Anthony kind of brought up the reason why rice notices were being issued, and clearly we have at least one council member that just wants to put this under the rug. Clearly that's it. wrong, Mike. Okay. Clearly what I want to do is, is get to a point where we stop harassing the business people and, and just move forward. That's, we, are, that's the issue. Should we if hold, we need to clarify this, Mike, yes, I agree with that. The, let me we need to come forward, but I, I think that you've shown over the course of time, in fact, we just went through an investigation that cost us $40,000 on, you know, going after the same person. Stop. Please stop this. So that 
was actually a, that was actually a private matter that was never discussed publicly. Well, good. But being that Councilman Vell brought it up, it did cost forty thousand dollars to actually say I did nothing wrong. If so, they didn't say that. They said we need to follow best practices, and I don't uh, perceive this as best practices. Okay, good. So what I'm going to do and now, and you and I are going to disagree on we that. We are. One. So would would. Would getting to the bottom of it include discipline, do you think, Councilman, or no, I, I don't, You know, I really, I really can't tell, Mike, because that seems to be all you're interested in. Got Let's it. discipline and hurt people. So what I'm going to do now, since I think we're getting a little bit of different opinions, opinions here. Yeah, we're going to get different um, opinions. Because, Councilman Ravel, you have not seen any of the data, to the best of my ability. You haven't seen the invoices. Well, Mike, you haven't you, reviewed you opened anything. all this stuff. You did all this stuff. Did. Nobody, nobody knew about it till now. So therefore, I'm going to just give a nice summary. I think the manager did an okay job. I think some of us That's up here. That's a good job myself. I think so. some of us here are just trying to say, well, let's just fix this administratively. But I'm going to actually get into it a little bit. Is that okay? It's your prerogative. It is. So as mayor and a member of the township budget committee, especially because of all the development happening, I have been curious about the policies and procedures surrounding a very specific bank account called the developer escrow account. In January 2021, I formally asked, this went back to January by the way, in January 2021, I formally asked the township manager for documentation regarding this account. Eight months later, after putting into context other information that I gathered, I believe there needs to be a full forensic audit of these accounts. Basically, for the general public listening, Developers looking to do business in Belleville make an application to either our planning board or our zoning board. And they, they then place escrow monies in an account pursuant to state statute and township ordinances. Those funds, according to the state statute, should only be used for payment to outside professionals and consultants and for reimbursement to the township for municipal professionals. In essence, the outside professionals are professionals who have previously been qualified by the township, who, who then have an established business relationship with the township, such as our engineers, redevelopment council, and planners. They're all paid from these escrow accounts as they perform their professional services on behalf of the township. It should also be noted, when these outside professionals are qualified via the public RFP process, their fee structure is noted and approved. The state statute is very clear. Only outside professionals and consultants and reimbursement to the township for salary of municipal professionals are permitted to be paid out of these escrow accounts. Additionally, the state statute specifically states that applicants escrow shall not be billed for any municipal clerical or administrative functions. Quotes directly from the state statute. Not satisfied with the results of my email question from January 2021, I was then forced to file an OPA request for the account documentation. I received that information several weeks ago, and today I believe I now have evidence that invoices for professional services have been typed up from within town hall and provided to the finance department. Based on those invoices, checks were cut with the manager's signature stamped on them, as he mentioned before. <laughs> These actions circumvent all known financial checks and balances within the township. No authority exists for such a thing. Arbitrary dollar amounts were selected as a fee structure. It should be noted that one employee in question, Mr. DiLorenzo, is already being compensated $17,292 above his current municipal pay of $173,000 to perform various services and functions on behalf of the planning board and zoning boards. The money being extracted from this account is over and above that additional compensation. Mr. DiLorenzo is our construction code official, to which he receives a municipal salary of $173,000. Mr. DiLorenzo is also our zoning officer, and according to all of our local ordinances, he's not supposed to receive any additional compensation for those services. He does perform some duties as planning director and he is already receiving an extra stipend of $17,292 per year for services he renders outside his normal work day. In fact, there is a resolution which we mentioned before authorizing the stipend of the extra $17,000 a year for these services. The resolution clearly states 
The mayor and the township council of the township of Belleville acknowledge that some of these duties are performed by Frank DiLorenzo outside his regular workday, and therefore he should be compensated by the same. Those duties he's already being compensated for, an extra $17,292 above the $193,000 a year are outlined in the res that resolution. That paragraph actually reads, whereas the mayor, the township council, wish to ensure that Frank DiLorenzo is compensated for performing his duties, such as receiving, processing, conducting initial intake for all development applications to the planning board, receiving, processing, conducting all initial intake of development applications under any redevelopment plan, provide responses to development applications for compliance, conduct a determination of completeness, and respond to applicants regarding any omissions or deficiencies, certify the completeness to the appropriate board, attend and participate in all regularly scheduled meetings of the planning board, attend and participate in all special meetings of the planning board, meet with developers to discuss applications pending in front of the planning board, attend and participate in developer meetings, and attend all subcommittee meetings pertaining to development projects. Yet, even though he's being compensated for planning board special meetings, planning board subcommittee meetings, even after our meetings, this documentation shows that he regularly created his own invoices for $750 for special planning board meetings, invoices for $200 for planning board subcommittee meetings. He created his own fee structure, typed up invoices, and received checks totaling thousands of dollars. I immediately contacted the township manager and I demanded an investigation. Clearly, the manager thought this was warranted and a rice notice for discussion was had. These are several invoices totaling thousands of dollars that have been typed up in town hall for arbitrary dollar amounts that are not part of any of our ordinances. $200 for a special meeting, a subcommittee meeting, $750 for subcommittee meetings, I'm sorry, for special planning board meetings, everything to which he was already being compensated for an additional $17,000. Invoices typed up in this building, walked downstairs, checks cut, and money deposited. I don't think this is a miscommunication. I would ask the township manager to continue investigating this. I don't know why three weeks wasn't already enough, but I do ask him to continue investigating this and or decide whether it needs to be done by outside uh, agencies. Mr. Manager, any, anything else? Just, just as a clarification to council, yes. just a quick question. Why didn't we do this with an ordinance rather than a resolution? Because to me, my understanding with certain resolutions is they're only good for like a year. Not sure. Um, frankly, um, we are in private. We're, we're in public. Oh, okay. If I tell Never mind. Never you, mind. If I tell you that, I will violate my lawyer client privilege. So okay. I can't Never mind. do that. Never mind. I bet a lot of people are hearing that for the first time. This is something that I've been looking at for a long time. It's clear. It's obvious. <clears throat> we have somebody being compensated to do X, Y, and Z. That compensation includes special meetings, subcommittee meetings, and after hours meetings. We then have somebody typing up invoices in this building, walking downstairs, creating arbitrary dollar amounts for $750. Or to, what if he wanted $2,000 for a subcommittee meeting? What if he wanted $1,250? They're literally, he's literally created his own invoices, his own fee structure, typed them up on our computers probably up on the third floor, walked downstairs and got checks for services he's already being additionally compensated for. Total compensation, $189,000 before you add up all these invoices. I only have six months worth of invoices, but by the way, $189,000 legitimately before you add up these invoices for arbitrary dollar amounts. Is it a miscommunication, Councilman, to make up your own fee hey, structure? I, Mike, I, I'm saying we need to clarify it and we need to move forward. That's, you, that's oh. your prerogative. You want to sit here and give me this diatribe, continue on. But you know what? We haven't resolved squat. Oh, I think we've resolved stuff. I think now the public knows, I think the manager knows, I think the administration knows that we have an employee in here typing up his own invoices, walking downstairs, bypassing every single checks and balances, not being paid in this payroll, but by the way, but just getting a check on the side and depositing it 
for services he's already being paid for. You, Councilman, as a as a steward of this township, should, I, I should be agree. should I be agree. shocked by that. I, you I, should be I, outraged. I, I agree. And instead of trying to tell I me it's a clerical error, you should be outraged. That we should be shocked. But then, okay, we, you need to take responsibility too because you are the head of this council. You are the man. So you know, what? I'm the one that's and it's been going on for years, Mike. It's been going on for years while you were the mayor. Oh, Come on, yeah. stop. No, it's my fault. Well, right. hey, I'll turn, nothing's I'll your turn fault, myself Mike. in with I, everybody I, else. I turn yourself in because you should. My fault. Got it. Anyway, let's move forward, man. So, uh, Tommy, anything? No, I just soaking this all in right now. Okay. It's the first time. So, so um, I, I did want to ask uh, the manager, and thank you, Mayor, for providing the information. Obviously, there's a lot for us to process, and I understand that emotions run high when uh, we have to make decisions that involve uh, identifying what actually happened and who uh, this is. I don't think it's about blaming and finding fault, but understanding how can we be better and how can we make our, you know, what we, we have a responsibility to the township to manage well and to establish policies that can be followed so things like this don't happen. So. Uh, to the manager, I understand that you're both still in this process of investigation. Um, but as of now, we have a level of, of information. That what happens with this? What, where do we go from here? So, from in other towns, there would be a criminal investigation, in my opinion. But so, from a procedural point, which we will discuss, because and again, I just want to point out one, emphasize one thing that the mayor said. Mayor said. Um, and he used the word checks and balance. I think what we're going to find out in this process and possibly at the next conversation, there is no checks and balance. Or there were no checks and balances. Which is highly susceptible to fraud. Again, um, when we talk about the next topic, the planning board and the zoning board have to, and they have a fiduciary responsibility yes. to approve every single invoice. They have never to the best of my knowledge, and again, the review is nowhere near complete, but to the best of my, not my knowledge, none of the, there has been no checks and balances at all, and that's a problem. So, so just for you to know and for taxpayers to know, when this was brought to my attention on that day, I have suspended the escrow account. So no one is being paid out of the escrow right. account, whether you're an attorney, whether you're a court stenographer, whether you're a, an engineer, a planner, no one will be paid until we have checks and balances in place. It's unfortunate that we found out the way we found out that there are no checks and balances, but I think, again, the part B of this conversation when we discuss procedures, or I should say procedures that are not being followed, we're going to find out that they, they have a fiduciary responsibility to approve every invoice and they haven't approved any invoices. Yeah, so and, and I agree with that. And that is what we, we will do moving forward. Mm -hmm. My question is to what just happened, right? There is, um, in my calculations, just briefly, right, we're talking about 750, 200, and I don't know how many meetings a month we're talking about, but we have established that it goes back at least back to two years. So it, my question is, from here, you know, is there a responsibility for someone to to pay this money back? Is there a responsibility? There, there very well may be. I mean, okay. at the conclusion of the review, and, and again, I just want to emphasize, you know, the town, ma town manager and the assistant town manager have worked in conjunction and have reviewed every personnel matter that has been before us in the last two years, regardless of if it was police, fire, yeah. public works, or in this case, public employees. We have acted as one. I uh, use Mark's 20-plus years' experience, my 20-plus years' experience. So I, I feel that we will, the, the review will come with a recommendation. Absolutely, and I don't envy your job. I definitely know that this is a difficult process. However, I do think we have a big responsibility to the township to make sure that we do things right. And at the same time, that we review the policies so it doesn't happen you again. You need the same uh, procedure in place. No clearly preaching to the choir. My, we, my name is on a check that I've never seen. So obviously, that absolutely. Is, that I mean, is that's great, great dangerous. concern of me. Very um, dangerous. Sure. Of course. Those checks wouldn't have been seen if invoices weren't typed up. Uh, and I know we keep saying that there are no checks and balances. There are checks and balance. I mean, I have the ordinance here, which we're going to get into in our discussion. But I have the ordinance here, which is our local ordinance. And it actually says that the zoning officer shall refer and the zoning officer is supposed to be being that checks and balances that everybody says doesn't exist. It's actually the duty of the zoning officer to distribute 
the materials to different professionals and, and I thought my one conversation in reading in one of them that the and Steve certainly correct me if I'm wrong because I know you and I discussed it but doesn't the planning board and the zoning board similar to the mayor and council approve approved. bill this aren't they supposed to be voting on a bill list each at each monthly yes, meeting absolutely. Uh, absolutely. according to our ordinance yes to be doing. presented to them by the zoning officer or time out so we do have we do have a procedure in place it's not being done so my question is if that zoning officer is supposed to be doing x y and z and not doing it what are you going to do about that again that would be part of the review and the conclusion and the recommendation okay understood because i mean it's easy to say the, the system is broken this is not broken there's somebody not doing their job the job is supposed to be, it says it right here, the zoning officer does that stuff. I think the problem is it's the zoning officer that's actually submitting invoices getting paid. I think when we discuss policies and procedures, we're going to see that we do have to make some, some serious corrections. Or you have to actually hold the employees accountable to do the tasks that the ordinance says they're supposed to be doing. I don't want to make this more complicated and more confusing. No, I don't mind because I'll explain it. But, okay, that's fine. But we did rice one employee for receiving pay to go to uh, meetings and they were getting some meetings. I think they were $150 of meetings. There's nothing in place that pays over 150. However, we do have a salary ordinance that says the planning board secretary gets $500 per meeting. Per, no, per, I, and I'm not going that route, but it does say it's for the planning board meetings. <laughs> it says $500 per meeting, the salary meeting. ordinance. Right. So a planning board meeting or a special planning board meeting or a subcommittee meeting, it doesn't say that. So, so maybe she shouldn't have been getting paid $150. Maybe she should have been getting $500, maybe. Because again, and that's the part that I think when the more we look into this, the more we have to, I think we have to correct that salary ordinance because if it says $500 per meeting. So let me ask you a question. You sit in on our redevelopment meetings, right? The zoning officer is also there. The construction code official, same person. No invoices for those meetings. Why, why, is there no, like, uh, why is there no invoices for those meetings? Are you asking me that question? Just some, if you have any idea why. I mean, I'm sure you've talked to the employee about this in I, three I weeks. Never, never asked the employee the question of why he didn't submit. For a uh, redevelopment. The meetings that we, we sit on, the redevelopment meetings. Again, it's after hours. You're asking a question I don't have the answer why to. Why not make up a, a number of $1,125 for those meetings? Isn't it odd that we're just making up arbitrary numbers and deciding which meetings we want to get paid for? You don't find that off? No, I, I have already presented everything that I've looked at to date so far. Got it. I clearly think that there has to be <clears throat> some uh, corrections to the resolution or to the ordinance or the salary ordinance, whatever. I and or if you find wrongdoing, I'm assuming you're gonna act on that wrongdoing. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. And I think I think one of the questions that um, Councilwoman uh, Topinia asked was, would one of the uh, considerations be to pay the money back. And certainly that would obviously be one of the considerations. Yeah, I mean, can I submit invoices and get money and then when I get caught, pay it back? But I was answering a question. No, I'm, just, I'm asking you a new question. Well, I'm, I'm sorry, on salary. I'm on salary for $7,000 a year. I, why don't I just make up an invoice for a redevelopment meeting? We have a redevelopment meeting next Tuesday. We discuss developers. They have escrow accounts. Why don't I just type up an invoice and decide that I want to make six hundred dollars for redevelopment meetings get paid and then in a couple of years if i get caught after thousands and thousands of dollars total up i'll pay it back i, I don't why even, don't i just i would love that I don't, I don't even have to redevelopment i think you're sending a bad a, message to other employees by, by saying well if you get caught doing wrong, to, you pay i don't it back. know if the redevelopment committee is even recognized by our town ordinance i don't i don't i don't know the answer to that subcommittees really not by the way i don't i don't know so the, the point i'm trying to say is there's clearly again review is not completed but one of the considerations would be to answer your question there's a, a, a difference between a committee and a board a board is created by ordinance right sure. there, there's rules and, and policies and procedures in place for the planning board zoning board library board all of that for the redevelopment committee to your credit i think you developed it when you started bringing development into Belleville. so i think that's a good thing mm -hmm. but i don't think the redevelopment committee is recognized anywhere got it as any authority i mean I don't know if we don't vote. There's no votes and, and things like that. I think we discussed and stuff. Very informal. Thank you. Okay. Anybody else? I uh, gave Councilman Graziano a chance. Ms. Burke? No, no, no. Naomi spoke. We're good. Vinny? No, we're good. Steve? Okay. So with that being said, we're going to move on to discussions. Dovetailing perfectly into this discussion is the explanation of developer fees and policies. So I have a 
Uh, just so the public knows, there are two things that we're dealing with now. We're dealing with a state statute that says how developer fees are done. It's much like an attorney trust account. It's, it's got its own statute explaining how it's done. That's governed by the state. We then have a local ordinance. Are you going to refer to uh, Chapter 19? Yeah, yeah, I'm getting there. I got 19 here. Have copies for everyone, because I think I have copies. No. You have copies? This was your presentation. No. No. You put this on the agenda. Explanation of developer fees policies from the township manager. Well, who put it on the agenda? Not me. Well, yeah, but you're going to explain it to us. Mm -hmm. Passing down or what? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I just want to make sure it's not the marked up copy. I don't think it is. That's a quick picture. So that's, yeah. I think that's what you're referring to, right, sir? Oh, we do have copies. 19, but do you also have, since we're handing out information, do you have the state statute? I think that's it. Right? I do. I don't know if I have. Uh, I could put up my screen for everybody to read if they'd like, because I have it here. I'll point everybody to the highlighted portion that says the municipality or proving authority shall not bill the applicant or charge any escrow account or deposit authorized in the subsection B of the section for any municipal or clerical administrative functions. So, do you have this to hand out to everybody? No. Okay. So we should definitely start with that because yeah, that's local. I have uh, ordinance number 2240. No, I'm looking for state statutes. Is an ordinance requiring applicants for development and developers to establish deposits of money in escrow? Is that the one you're referring to? I'm referring to state statute title 40 and chapter 19, which you handed out. This is state. This is local. You handed out local. I just wanted everybody to be aware of the highlighted portion that literally says you cannot pay any money out of the escrow for clerical or municipal administrative functions, yet we just think it's an oversight. But we already had that discussion, so now let's talk about how we're going to adhere to the state statute, which I think sure. you could take this local ordinance and it's not worth anything because it can't supersede state statute. So exactly. any discussion really should start with the state statute, which actually initially talks about only being paid by outside consultants and reimbursed by for municipal services, reimbursed meaning that we pay someone a salary, and then we, the township, collect money based because we already paid them. Not, they get paid, and they get paid again. That's not the way it's supposed to be. So just that to, says it right there. Just to clarify for the direction, are we not going to discuss the existing ordinance in place that has the floors, or are we going to discuss the state statute, which I'm fine. If we're going to discuss the state statute, maybe we should take a five-minute recess and have Jackie make copies for all of us? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's up to yeah, Again, I... I don't, you're referring to the state statute, I may not have read that. Understand this. Okay. So the three week investigation hasn't even gotten to, to the state statute yet. So we so want to talk about the three week uh, investigation. Let's talk about um, the assistant town manager being on vacation for one week. Got it. And I don't know where you've been for the last week, but I've been in people's basements and cleaning up sidewalks okay. and streets for the last Somehow week. Somehow you found chapter 19 though. Chapter 19 was found in the first week. Okay. All right. So, go ahead. Talk about 19. I thought we were talking about the state statute. You don't have it. Okay, so we're not talking about the state statute. We're talking about Chapter 19? I guess so. This was your presentation from the township manager. So, you're ready for 19? Go with 19, I guess. No. I, again, um, I don't believe we have checks and balances in place for the planning board and the zoning board. Um, my presentation to you is that maybe you are not aware of it and you just found out about it for tonight for the first time but there is an escrow account it's kept down in the finance department up until two three weeks ago every check paid out of the escrow account was done on a, a stamp machine I was I'm told that that's the way it's been done for years I don't know the total number of years the review haven't hasn't told us is this issue a 10 year old problem a five year old problem or a two year old problem but the point I'm trying to say is um, so again the invoices are being submitted I don't know if anybody is reviewing them to as far as to the accuracy of the um, invoices okay uh, and there's no checks and balances in place as far as I'm concerned because it clearly says that the authority, I think one of, uh, one of the, um, it, it talks about 
uh, independent professionals and consultants of Palm Vouchers duly submitted and approved the amount so fixed by the approving authority. So again, is the authority the construction official or is the authority the board? No, the approving authority would be the planning board or zoning board itself. So okay, Just like so, the council does a, a, a bill list. Okay. But someone's so, got to give that bill list. It also talks about shall transfer um, the township treasurer, which uh, just as a point of clarification, I don't believe we have a treasurer in place by by resolution or ordinance. I think Joe may have been, Joe Cavanaugh may have been the less. So we, we probably should address that too correctly because this particular um, ordinance talks about how um, the township treasurer shall transfer from the escrow account to the township general funds. And that's where you were talking about how uh, we get reimbursed when we do um, work. The, the, if the town engineer or the construction official is doing work on a development project, those dollars and those numbers are reimbursed, uh, and that money is paid back to the township, to the general fund. I don't believe that's being done. And I think so, so what we did, what I said before was, when this was brought to our attention, we called a timeout, we suspended the account, and when I say suspended, no invoices, regardless of uh, individual company, engineers, have been paid and won't be paid until we have something in place. In your review of chapter 19, whose job is it to collect the invoices and present them to the board? I don't have that answer handy. I'm, I'm going to give you the answer. It's 1913.2. 13.2? Yep. Sure. Number one, A1. A1. Go ahead. You have it? 1913.2. A, number one. The escrow account to be established under the section. Right. The that zoning way. officer shall refer the applications with the maps to all the professionals. Mm -hmm. So obviously the zoning officer collects the information, he disperses it. Number two, within 14 days of receipt, professionals must submit uh, their estimates. You would think that since the zoning officer is issuing, the zoning officer then receives. But could I just, just yeah. and again, I'm just putting that out so the council can take it all in. So it says within 14 days after receipt, the professionals shall submit an estimate right. of the funds. Again, this is a, a escrow account that I have no knowledge of, that I have not worked with. So I can't tell you right now that within 14 days they're being submitted, which could be another flaw if, if it's not. I don't think it's a flaw. I just think somebody's not doing their job. But I don't know if it's being done or not. I, okay. I don't know that answer. Okay. I, I don't necessarily think it's a flaw. I just think... <clears throat> The, the, the person in that title is not doing their job. Okay. And there might be a reason why that's not that's happening that way because there's something else going on. If, but, if I may, sure. Anthony, just a question because you said it three or four times yeah, that as soon as we found out we halted the escrow fund, we, we stopped things, right, not to continue this. Will that function still be done going forward as we we control it? Progress I'm, I'm hoping to town. I mean, I'm hoping to stop. I'm hoping to walk away with maybe, if it's not tonight, in a very near meeting soon with a clear, uh, clear direction that we are going to sit down with the board secretaries, the construction officials, the chairman of each board, so that we're all on the same page. Because if we found out anything in this last couple of weeks, is that the right hand really doesn't know what the left hand was doing. Because, I, I mean, I made a call to a chairman, asked him a question. He didn't have the right answer, or he didn't have the answer. Okay, he didn't know the answer. So, again, that's... But, 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 my point, but my point is, we halted that. I don't, I personally, I don't think the town wants to see things stop moving forward because of this. Right. Meaning, you understand what I'm saying? And for other people to get paid as well, although yeah, this... I just want to see... I want is on the investigation. I Mm -hmm. Right. And it, there's ways of handling that, and that's by taking the invoices and, and asking a chairman to come in. What, what if we just... An oversight by the CFO. W w what if we just said to you, Mr. Manager, we want you to make sure Chapter 1913.2 is being enforced? Because it's, there isn't really a breakdown. It says the zoning officer refers the application to the professionals. Within 14 days of receipt, they submit their estimates. That those estimates go to the board. It's clear who's supposed to be doing that. I don't think we need a deeper percent. I think you just need to make sure people are doing what they're obligated to do. But I, and again, that's your job. So that's, But I just said that we need to put the chairmen of each board. It doesn't say anything about a chairman here. 
says the authority. Let's go back to what I said before. The planning board and zoning board. I'm, okay. I'm on the planning board, so I, I could I could planning board and zoning board how that works. must vote on all bills, just right. like this governing body vote, yes. vote on a bill list tonight. So it has to yeah. come before us, the planning board, to do that. Right. I or, can't or make or it I'm come not before me. put my name on it. If somebody else wants to put on their name on it, but it be you, my you, guess. you're not reading number one. But who it, pre who prepares it? Would it be the CFO again, like they prepare it, it for us again? Why don't we just read what it says? It says the zoning officer. But why? that's only that's only one step in the entire process. No, that's it's there. not. Well, sure there are there. That's just for the initial escrow. Thank you. It's not the bills. The, stat, the, bill, it the goes further. People, you, you Upon receipt of such estimates, the approving authority shall determine that the funds they consider to be reasonable and necessary once to pay. Up, once they're before us in a bill list, yes. Right. But in order to we uh, gotta distribute get bill and get the you. invoices. You're on number one, and I get it, and, and, and I agree with you. If you Thank want you. me to say... That it is number one. It is the zoning officer shall refer development. Yes, it does. I I, okay. I agree with that. All right. But I but you have to take the ordinance in Not its place. I agree. It later goes on to say, upon such receipt of such estimates, the approving authority shall determine Just that like the, the bill list. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay, so I think that was the question. I thought that was the question. No, but okay. Again, it's my name on something that clearly, the town manager and the zoning board have no connection, right? The planning board and the town, I don't have the authority to appoint. Uh, and again, it is a little confusing, and I think you know this. The mayor and council adopt a budget with a dollar amount for, say, the planning board attorney or the zoning board attorney. But the mayor and council doesn't appoint the planning board or the zoning board attorney. The planning board does, and the zoning board does. So again, I think there's a disconnect there as well. No, I, well, I, the planning board's supposed to hire their own attorney, their own the planning board does make those decisions. The, the municipal council obligates funds right. for them to draw from, but no, the boards definitely vote for their own professionals. Can you clarify how that relates to this in regards to funds? And I mean, I understand your, your, your point about how there is a disconnect and who hires whom, but I'm just trying to understand how this relates to the portion of funding. That has been disbursed. Which, which part? Part about the that disconnect with their hiring their own attorneys with how this you know we're we're talking about procedures, are we not? Are we yes. still there? Yes. We're okay. On so I would like to bring the conversation back to that because we do not have other things on the agenda. So we walk out of here with some actionable items because otherwise, what we're going to do respectfully to all the men here is just walk out with trying to determine who set the most, but ultimately we're not getting anything across. So can we be a bit more specific as to what are we looking into here? We have this information and we're trying to identify which proce procedures are not being followed. If we need time to read them, then maybe we just need to stop and we need to consider, let's read this, let's study it, and in the next meeting, we all sit down with questions. Because I find that right now, we don't know what we don't know. Right. That's the first step in I, investigation. You have to know what you don't know, and then that you don't know what you don't know, then you come in with the right questions. Because otherwise, this is just an argument and it's a waste of tax dollars. It's not okay. I'm fine with that. So, I, you know, I just want to... I, I agree with you, Deputy Mayor, but now what happens is do we have to go through this whole rice policy every time we're going to talk about no. this? I no. believe so, Councillor. If you're going to speak about an employee, you but, have to notify that employee. But if we're just going to do policy and procedure, we right. don't have if to. We're going to do policy. If we're going to just... Well, well those, those are two separate things. Two separate things. Okay. But because, but because this is now public, right? right we I don't should, know. We should... Right, not, it, not by... Our choice. No, but. no, not by our choice, but my point is, why would we have to go back to that drawing board every time because it's public now, right? No, well, the law is the law. I mean, if we're going to speak about, if we're going to speak about employees, the law. I'm just saying, again, we have to follow whatever the, the, the statute is. What becomes. everybody's missing here, just, just, just let okay. me say something here. What everybody's missing here is, ordinarily, personnel matters such as individual personnel matters has nothing to do with this mayor and council. This mayor and council does not discipline. Does not. It's all your. It's all the manager's responsibility. Your purpose in advising the mayor and council about those three individuals that you riced was just for an advisory, an advisory circumstance. I'm fine with that. You, it does not. If you decide that. Everything was okay, and 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 you just want to change it going forward. That's ultimately your prerogative. If you decide that you know 
uh, there should be dis discipline involved, that's your prerogative. We're, everybody, public and otherwise, always discusses how this mayor and council doesn't do any of that. They don't get involved in the day-to-day -day operations. You were doing it as a courtesy to the, to the mayor and council, and since you were going to do it and raise the issue of individual employees, I advise you, you need to rice notice them. Um, but ultimately, going forward, if whether you would, the only time you would need to rice anyone going forward is if you were going to do that again, because this mayor and council doesn't give you direction and can't, under the Faulkner Act, give you direction with respect to what happens to an individual employee. Um, and I, and I, agree, I agree with what you're saying, and I actually thought I said that right. in, in my presentation to the mayor and council. Right. I, so, I really so when, when Councilman Graziano asked that question, no, rice notices were only necessary for this um, because an employee was going to be discussed, and even the and I, I actually we were being overly cautious with respect to that because this mayor and council can't do anything. But if there was going to be discussions and there was going to be some opinions rendered by any of these mayor and council affecting any of those employees, they had a right to know it, and which is why you gave them the right no, rice notice. So uh, in answer to Ca Councilman Graziano's question, that's the only reason why you would have to do that. Uh, but ultimately, this mayor and council has no control over it. And going forward, I think Councilman Revell mentioned that, if we're deputy mayor, if we discuss a second time the policy procedures, we don't necessarily need to touch employees. Therefore, there's no rice notice. It's just this conversation again. Yeah. Your recommendations to the policies and procedures might come at the next caucus, and there's no reason, in my opinion, to rice employees because we're not talking about specific employees. There's no reason to rice employees because we're not going to speak about that. Right. There won't be, and if we are, we have to rice them. Right. And, it and won't that's be discussed in the executive session either. That's correct. Understood. It would be policies and procedures that the public should be aware of. Aware of that we're putting in place. Anybody else? We really should, to echo what Councilman Graz said, we really should get on this, though, because at the next meeting, because we do quick. have a lot of stuff in the pipeline that could get held up. So maybe yeah, and what I meeting, said before, I really want to put the chairmen of yeah. each board. The chairman is in the I want the site. secretaries in the room. Mm -hmm. I want everybody in the room because, I, again, I want to go through, I, and again, we'll go through every single mm -hmm. uh, uh, point and step. In, in Agreed. Does it have, but my question is, does it have to be? He can do it. Can he? Can you do it yourself? Does it have? So right, call a meeting? No, no. I mean, I think Tommy. Tommy's trying to stop. No, well, trying not, to keep progress. Right. I'm trying to keep progress. Yeah. But my point That's is this: it. So I'll, I'll, I'll be blunt. Go ahead. Right. So, if this is going on, everybody knows the job can still be done based on the statute. From what Agreed. Mm -hmm. Is that a true statement? Yes. yes. Okay. So, so, so can I say something here? Okay. Based on the statute. Absolutely, the job can be done because the statute does not require the bills to be approved by the approving authority. The CFO can approve the bills uh, for the developers. So the statute Should does do. not require our ordinance is a good ordinance. There are some inconsistencies in terms of one section and another. Mm -hmm. We have it's duplicative, not inconsistencies, but. Our, our ordinance actually provides more checks and balances than the statute requires, which mm -hmm. is fine. Mm -hmm. But you, the CFO, if, CFO. And, but agree. the CFO yeah. just apparently, I, I, and you'll do this in your investigation, is, as to how that procedure was working, how, how these bills were getting paid, you'll do that in your investigation. But going forward, you can specifically direct the CFO to yeah. not only look at the invoices all and provide and ask questions or have you ask questions. But I would strongly so recommend how not to approve anything until somebody else's until signature the board, is on it. Until the board whether approves. it's the construction official, whether it's the, the chairman of the board. the board. Again, because just on what we're saying here, mm -hmm. a planner can submit a bill for six hours and was only at the meeting for two hours. She's going to put her name on it she and said that the planner was there for six hours when he was only there for two Absolutely. hours. Absolutely. I don't think anybody approved. would want to put their name on something like that Planning unless I knew that that person that put in for six hours worth of work did the six hours worth of work. Exactly. Yeah. Well, what I'm saying is it was supposed to be included in the current structure of payment, right? That's what, that's what, this whole, what, I, what I gathered. What right? was supposed to be included? It wasn't. So the, 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 the job that was being performed was all part of the stipend. 
correct? I don't see well, that. Well, I don't see that. Um, I can't necessarily say that. So, it, it, no, it was part of it was part of the job as the planning, uh, doing the planning work that because we don't have a planning director, do the planning work and the zoning officer work. It was part of that job according to ordinance, yes. Um, all I'm saying, and, and my sole purpose in doing it is we don't, we may need, there may be some decisions after everybody reviews this uh, and we have a discussion next time that the ordinance has to be changed. If the or we do not want these payments to be held up and this development to be held up be I don't want to hold them up. I just want somebody's signature. Right, right. I get it. So what I'm saying is, under we would not be in violation of we would not be in violation of the ordinance if the CFO, in conjunction with you know you and, and the chairman of the chairmen of the boards, to say, okay, was this done? I mean, I, I, every law department bill that comes through, I look at and I make sure the billing's correct and the hourly is correct and all that stuff, right? That's what you need to do until you're in a place to sit down with the board secretaries, the two uh, board chairmen, uh, the construction code official the, uh, who also serves as a zoning officer, uh, and develop so everybody knows what the procedure the is here. supposed to be. We're not doing it. Um, and then you won't, in it's the long run, you authority. won't ultimately have, mm -hmm. have that, have the but problem the you had be going I think we're all saying basically the same thing, yeah. so. Right. Okay. Council, can you uh, clarify just one more thing for me? Um, in the process of paying um, other uh, developers, can other professionals. other professionals, excuse me, yeah, um, can we choose to pay certain people and not other people that are still under investigation in this process? Or if we resume paying for professional services, do we have to continue to pay while they're still conducting that investigation? Well. You, you, Professionals are entitled to payment, right? They're outside. So, so in, in, s employees, no, you don't. I mean, so Anthony the has clarification already said, would be Anthony's then, already said that the employees were getting paid. They're not putting in that, any invoices, so we don't have to worry well, about. I think he already told it. them not to put in. Got it. Okay, understood. That's why I just wanted to clarify that there no, aren't any I'm new invoices. I'm, a, I'm talking about third party. Understood. professionals that the mm -hmm. planning board or zoning board needs Understood. Uh, Understood. attorneys that the you know uh, the redevelop the redevelopment okay. attorney is 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 an attorney that the township hires mm -hmm. but the, they're paid out of escrow because mm -hmm. the township has to hire them and the township shouldn't be paying them yeah so I'm, I'm not that's okay yeah I'm no that's you know funds that we're supposed to, the township is supposed to get from the escrow account are, are happening in every Oh, they're definitely not. And I think, and that's, you know, that's obviously. We're, we're losing more money. Right. That's something we need to address. So, oh, yeah. so that, for, for instance, that stipend. Are we supposed to be billing that? Is reimbursable. For, reimbursable. That stipend actually is, for, 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 in most circumstances, is reimbursable. So that stipend that the township is paying, yeah, been paying I'm just, I was is. That. It, Should come back through that account and into yeah. our budget. Right. But understand what's not doing that either. happening to the is we're not doing that either. Budget, yeah. that technically. Is that Instead no, of us being reimbursed, no, that person is invoicing and collecting more money. Understood. Yeah. yeah but we're not invoicing mm -hmm. appropriately either. As right. we're not, we're not getting our reimbursement. Right. We drove. Is what you're saying. Right. Why uncovered? Right. Uh, but again, I mean, that's a problem too. That mm -hmm. you know, that's a t you know, that's the development too. is now that there's more development. Obviously, it becomes right. more that, obvious. No, it's right. Well, and it has to be addressed to to straighten it out. All right, straighten it out. That's it. it I'm good. Well, there's a lot of questions, but for tonight, that's it. I think that's good enough for me. <laughs> yes. Now let's have a parking meter discussion. <laughs> okay. And again, just to remind the members of the public that are here, those watching and, and listening, this is a discussion among the, the council, our administration, our professionals. We're not being rude. We're not ignoring you. But uh, this is really a conversation amongst us that you're here to listen to. Uh, Councilman Gaziano put on the agenda parking meters. Yes, thank you, Mayor. So I'm just looking for an update from Anthony. Yeah, so the, the meter that we identified, we did share with the council. It is a, a co-op, so it's there's no bid threshold as far as we could pay through a state contract. And we just, uh, we're just falling a little behind on the 2022 uh, capital, pro, uh, capital budget. And I'm sorry, <laughs> thank you. 2021 capital budget. And what we said at the last uh, meeting that we discussed the um, uh, 
meat is, was that uh, it is a capital expense and would be included in the 2021 capital budget. For the, enti for the entire town, not just the parking lots. No, no, straight down Washington. Straight down Washington Avenue. And anywhere else we have a meter that we want to replace okay. or add. That's good, thank you. And then the other- It will definitely be in the 2021 capital budget. Okay. And then the other one was the gasoline. Yeah, uh, Bobby did find a possible alternative. I think the last time I reported to the council, we were up at like 60, 65,000. We've, you know, I think Bobby found something a, a little less to consider. But again, uh, whether it's 30,000 or 60,000, that expense would be included in the 2020 2021 capital budget. Okay, and then one thing that's not here, and I got it. This, um, I'm sure. Nope, nope, you can't. Nope, nope. Are nope. you serious? No, I'm going with this Not one. the deputy mayor anymore. It shouldn't matter. Um, I, I, again, Facebook, you believe halfway, you know, it is what it is. But I actually saw something that came through, and I put it on my... My three RBIs last night? Huh? The yeah, three, three RBIs, RBIs I had last night? Yes. There was, a, uh, Errors, there was something that Errors? came from, I guess I can't mention names, but it says uh, they spoke to the town manager's office on Thursday regarding bulk pickup not storm damage items, right. regular bulk pickup. Not picking it up. That was always the second garbage day of the week. Mm -hmm. I was told that the, contra that, that the contracted garbage company no longer does bulk, bulk, bulk pickup. Mm -hmm. All bulk pickup is done now by DPW. Mm -hmm. So with the damages, we got pushed back. That was something posted, but my other question is this. Basically I understand. Do you want me to answer that or? No, I'm, that's my first There's question. A, go ahead. So, my other, my other question is, I understand that we're out of contract with our current garbage contract as of June. And I want to know the status of what and where are we going with that my and where is that going to be covers it, two, I, two items on my manager's report that addresses that. Oh, All right. Right. So I get that you dialed in. You're you dialed want, in. Do you want me to wait till my manager's report yes. or you want me to answer? I think, let report. me just do my manager's report when yeah, I get to that. Report. But it does include both the bulk cleanup and the contract. So the next, uh, if, uh, that's good then? You're satisfied yeah. with that? You'll hear from him in a minute. You're going to get the answer. Tell me it's going to be addressed, yeah. Because yeah. I, I was even going to say it, too. Uh, okay, so manager. the next item on our agenda is the report of the manager. First, uh, let me start off by thanking <laughs> the uh, PBA for allowing me the opportunity to play in last night's softball game. Uh, it, was, uh, it was a privilege to play, and I was happy to contribute three RBIs. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, so, uh, Sorry. And I know it's great to have the manager's report go first because in the mayor's report, he will report that I had two and a half errors, which I only think I had. How many errors? Two and a half, but I think I had one. In we we played two games against Puerto Rico. He was the MVP of the first game okay. for Puerto Rico. Yeah. For Puerto Rico. All right. <laughs> three RBIs I had, three RBIs, okay. Um, you mean risk. Not three to risk. take anything away from the May's report because I know he always includes all of the upcoming events. I do. But the Green Fair and Community Shredding Day uh, this Saturday. Community Shredding Day is always a big day in Belleville. People really, really come out and get rid of all those um, confidential and personal things. You get to see everything shredded in front of you. So I just, I just wanted to emphasize that. Uh, it's 9 to 12 over at the senior uh, rec building on Franklin Avenue. Um, again, Bobby's here, Chief Minichini's here, and Chief Oliveira's here. What these three guys have done in the last, uh, I guess it's maybe close to 10 days now or so, uh, with uh, Hurricane Ida, we're just, just, you know, above and beyond. All three departments have worked their butt off. Uh, our public works guys are still out now until 6 o'clock during the week. We're st we still have a Saturday crew working out specifically and Sunday crew. So, uh, again, you talk about uh, a hurricane, New Jersey experienced over, I think it's the numbers up to 20-something deaths. I mean, we received over uh, 10 inches of rain uh, at one point. Obviously, no in infrastructure can hold that. So, you know, seeing people's basements and things of that nature and, and the, the amount of property that they lost was, was you know, obviously devastating and sad. Uh, but again, whether it's police, fire, and, and certainly hats off to Public Works, they have been doing a phenomenal job. And it's, it's really nice that we're getting um, emails now and phone calls of people really appreciating and seeing that, that work done. Um, sticking with Hurricane um, Ida, uh, we, we were, Essex County was very fortunate to be declared a major disaster declaration area. So we've been getting the word out. P 
people can go on the link, link, but the most important information that I can give you about FEMA today is that they have contacted us. They haven't given us the actual date. They're going to shoot for two dates where they're going to do a similar to a pop-up tent. Um, Silver uh, Lake got hammered, so maybe we might use the friendly house. Uh, and then another day, we'll pick a different section of town, maybe closer to Main Street. So we'll have FEMA representatives in the friendly house to help uh, go through the whole application process. They haven't given me the date. They haven't really confirmed that they were definitely coming into Belleville, but they said that they were going to try their best. So whether it's at the senior building or the friendly house, we'll have representatives there. And then on another date, we'll pick another section of Belleville, and the FEMA reps will be there. And again, we have to get the word out to residents that FEMA is there to help assist, answer questions, help with the application. So that's very, very um, Real quick. So, the, so we have a link. And, and there's the link is up on the FEMA, website you can now. Make a claim now. People can go on right now and, 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 now and you start should. the process. But you we're going to have again, knock on wood, that these representatives. Um, uh, they said that uh, you know they they were. I was trying to get the date today from them, for them to actually give us a date of when they are going to be here. But once that date is, we'll get the location and the word out. Mm -hmm. um, solid waste update. So there's a couple of components here. First, let me just talk about the existing condition of going on. Um, again, going back to, to Ida, I don't even know what the, the total is. I tried, started to put some numbers together. Uh, we're over 100,000 public works alone. I, I, I didn't do police fire yet. So that number is going to be big, right? I'm not there yet, we're, we're, and we're still spending money up until 6 o'clock tonight. We're still spending overtime. We're still spending containers. But what's going on specifically with solid waste, before I talk about the actual contract, we have um, private contractors dumping containers in sections of town so people can get rid of their uh, damaged property. We have a container down in the yard with a grappler. Um, I was going to take a video and put it up on the screen. The grappler is this machine that just crushes furniture and other uh, material, and it just crushes it, and we can put a, we have a 100-yard ton uh, container, and that just makes life easier. Um, because every time we fill up a container on the street and we take it to the dump, those guys are sitting in line uh, anywhere from two to three hours because every other town is, is sending stuff to the, and you know, all the towns have experienced damage. So uh, when people say, isn't it the responsibility of the current contractor on the second day of his garbage to pick up the bulk? The answer is yes. We have not excused them for that. But we all know, and there's no surprise, that the current contractor has failed on every level whether it's recycling, whether it's just regular solid waste, or whether it's um, the bulk on the second day. They can't even finish the route. Um, and again, I don't want to give you the excuses that I can. They can't keep the manpower. They can't, you know, uh, they have one person on a truck instead of three. It's just, it's really bad. Um, so the answer is no. We're, we have, and again, we're spending money that we're pretty comfortable saying that we're going to get reimbursed. So we're doing our best with the bulk. But this is coming to an end. Let's hypothetically say starting Monday, hopefully, we go back to the regular schedule. So your regular schedule is if your garbage is on Tuesday and Thursday and you have some damaged goods, on Thursday you put it out. Mm -hmm. and we're going to keep our fingers crossed that the current contractor who's failing us picks that up, okay? We've documented this. We have pictures. We have videos. Uh, and that leads us up to where we are with the status. This governing body t took the initiative and we hired a, a solid waste specification specialist, so to speak, a consultant that that's all he does, Wayne DeFeo. Uh, Wayne is about a week away. Matter of fact, there's a conference call with the superintendent, myself, and, and Steve, I believe, Tuesday or Wednesday, 10 o'clock. And the, the bid spec should be done uh, at the end of next week, which gives us the ability to put it out. We have to, um, it's a 60-day bid process, so the 60 days. So it's going to probably bring us into December or January, knock on wood, that we get a successful, uh, aggressive bid. We'll award a contract hopefully in the beginning of December, maybe the end of November, maybe, beginning of December, and, you know, give the new contractor and the old contractor maybe two or three weeks to do a transition and probably somewhere around, you know, I, I would love to say December 1st, but the reality of it is it's probably January 1st where hopefully we have a new contractor, somebody uh, new, full of energy that wants to do the job correct. Because if you take a look at the existing contract, 
they fail on so many levels, and it's, it's, it's just terrible. So for me to say they're picking up the bulk on the second day, they're probably not because they can't even finish the regular route. But that didn't stop us from jumping in and helping the residents. Every day we're getting to some, some great stuff. Uh, and then... Um, yeah, before you move on real quick, when we do that contract, is it... Can we put in there um, something like a deduction if they yes. don't finish the route and so our that's why we have to go out? Exactly. I'm sorry. Whatever. A, whatever. A per yeah, ton I, or per trip or something. Specifically, we hired this consultant yeah. to put together a, a, a spec that is going to cover us on every way, shape, or form um, because we're just getting. I, I, I agree. Uh, the, before Hurricane Ida, before oh, yeah. Hurricane Ida, garbage pickup was the. Most I'm most complaint in, in my report. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm going to hit some of this in my mayor's report. Okay. So, so I'll just go on to the uh, stadium project. Our geotech engineers have received the green light to uh, go ahead and start working on the existing soil next to the football stadium. Mm -hmm. Everybody saw what the, the football stadium came out as a finished product. Amazing. Mm -hmm. And now the soil, which is next to the uh, football field, will be removed, and that infrastructure drainage yeah the next phase is drainage and again we're, we're hoping for spring 2022 have we made arrangements i, I know we had some you know it was serious phase. flooding with the, the hurricane and everything like that have we made arrangements for the future that hopefully this drainage will take it away so we don't end up flooding drainage into the high school in. again yeah we almost made like a pond for it by having the dirt I, there. You know, I'll, so, I'll have that so conversation. Once it's yeah, exactly. Both yeah, yeah. the contract engineer right. and our town engineer, but the reality of it is there's no way you're going to This do storm it. happens again five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, it's going to flood. There will be drainage. There, there's no drainage. Oh, no. Yeah. Right. There the new be. field, that's the next phase. So we're the phase the that they're right. starting now the drainage. is all that's drainage. I'm only going to say that I, drainage or no drainage, if we get 10 inches of rain in an hour, we're going to have a problem. But that's, yes, the answer to your question is yes. Thank you, and that is the uh, conclusion of my report. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Mr. Manager. Uh, moving on to the report of the mayor. First question I have, you or the chief, are we still under an emergency dec I mean, really, Corbo would be the answer, would be the question. Are we still under an emergency declaration? Right. Not here. Can somebody find <laughs> out if we are, and can we have that removed? If because there's no longer a state of emergency. The governor lifted the state of emergency. Are you talking about the county? COVID? Yeah, COVID. COVID. To the best of my knowledge, the last that I asked Coder, the yeah. is COVID. As I, long as the county I know is we're open, we are the open. county is the and county. And I believe the reason why the county is open. When you, when you say open, I know what you mean when you say open. Ongoing and it's OEM. still under because we we get those reports every day. Yeah. So, but if the, okay, I just was curious. Yes, I will. I thought you were talking about Ida. Ida. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking no, about no. COVID. Yes. COVID. COVID. Yeah. COVID. The answer is yes. Sure, yeah. Even though the governor lifted the state of emergency for COVID. The county's still Counties. Okay, fine. And they actually specifically asked us to keep us. Yes. Okay. I do know that. I, I, okay. So, Councilman Graziano, I too get garbage questions, and I've developed an answer that Bobby knows because he's usually on some of the emails and Anthony CC it on them. I've developed a straightforward answer that I literally cut and paste because I get so many questions about it. The fact of the matter, the manager is exactly right. Our current contractor has failed us. We are in a process now. Uh, we, we retained a, a, a consultant to do the bids. Bids are out or we're waiting on bids. It's a 60 or 90 day process. At the end of next week. Right. The current guy probably realizes that he's out. Therefore, we're getting even worse service than we always did. But to answer your question specifically, in the aftermath of the flood, first of all, and I'm going to be talking about this in a split second, DPW did a fantastic job, but this township went above and beyond. We were providing dumpsters. Our DPW was physically cleaning out. Uh, if you put stuff curbside, our DPW. Let me tell you, I had a conversation with Mauro Tucci on Friday night. Nutley didn't provide any dumpsters. Hmm. Nothing. No, you were on your own. You were on your own. Nutley did nothing. He said we're we, not. we went above and beyond with all the dumpsters. Now, my email answer that goes to everybody is, in the aftermath of the storm, Bevel basically monopolized most of the dumpster companies. You know how hard it was, Ant, to find dumpster companies. We monopolized as many as we could. The problem became immediately day one, day two was a four-hour delay at the dump. Then it became Saturday, Sunday, weekend, dumps were closed. Monday was, was Labor Day, holiday, dumps were closed. We had people ready, willing, and able to drive. We had full dumps. We couldn't get rid of it. Um, that said, in the aftermath, as we got a week in, day two or, or the second pickup day is your bulk day. I got all the complaints that the garbage men finally came and, and they picked up they picked up my cans, but they told me no, I'm not taking the debris because they were making their own decision on what was 
regular household bulk and what was flood related. Anything flood related, they weren't touching. And who got yelled at? Me. Who, did I, who had to write the emails? Me. So the answer was on second day, they are responsible for bulk, but if they identified it as flood related, they weren't touching it. Uh, but I do, I'll get into DPW in a minute. So the rest of my, my mayor's report, past events. I always do past events, upcoming events, and news. Past events, summer concert series, a resounding success. I truly believe that this council will appropriate the necessary funds to make sure that happens again next year. Cannot tell you all the compliments we've gotten on that. Okay, uh, this past cool. Friday, manager touched on it, ribbon cutting for a new varsity field. Uh, again, capacity field, packed. Uh, standing room only, people surrounding the end zone, two Super Bowl champs were there with us uh, to help us do that. They gave a great pep talk. I was in the locker room. They gave a great pep talk inside the locker room. Uh, OJ had us all riled up. Anthony and I were ready to strap on some pads and get out there with them. Uh, that's how interesting it, it was. It was really a good time. September 11th, uh, I think the police uh, and, and Captain Pignataro took the lead in the MC, and our 9-11 committee did a great job as always. This year was a little different, 20th anniversary. I think everybody did a fantastic job. This past Sunday, I did welcome the seniors back to the senior center. I sponsored a welcome back barbecue for them. They've been itching to get back into the building, and this was like a welcome home type thing for them. We had four hours of barbecuing and food and fun, and it was a really good time. Uh, last night, as Anthony touched on it, Bevel PBA uh, played the Puerto Rican State Police. It was a great event. We only had about 48 hours to plan it. We were like the bad news bears. We had no, we were like a, an unregulated militia. We had no uniforms. We, we didn't have proper cleats. We had one bat that we were sharing. Uh, Sergeant Lasojo threw it into the audience at, at one point. That's on camera, by the way. Uh, but a, a great job. It's going to be an annual event. I think next year we've ar I've already talked to the PBA president. Uh, we're going to look to scale it up bigger and better. And I promise we will have uniforms next year. Upcoming events this coming Saturday. Manager touched on not one but two different green events. Our first ever green fair at the high school. I'm told I have to take a picture with a rain barrel. First time I've ever taken a picture with a rain barrel. In it. But in I, it. I will do that. In, in, it. It. in it. I'm going to go over the falls. Uh, we're also doing the shred event. So two. two <laughs> Two events the same day, Green Shred Day and Green Event. Uh, Information is on our website. October 2nd and 3rd, Townwide Garage Sale. October 9th, our food truck festival is back. Did we ever get a definitive answer? No. no. Okay. So our food truck festival is back October 9th. It's going to happen October 9th. We're not quite sure of the venue yet, but October 9th, it is back. We're definitely looking forward to that. Uh, library has a whole host of events happening, uh, but this coming Thursday we're having a Cuba event uh, to stand in solidarity with our Cuban friends to our south. Uh, please join us there. There's a Mad Science Lego event, a ton of ESL happening, uh, all kind, and actually a really good one, it's going to be Rumors with Francesca Bacardi. She's a page six gossip reporter. We have her in Belleville to discuss gossip columnist stuff. Interesting. A uh, lot of information, check out the library website. Real quick, uh, today I'm missing my sister's 60th, I'm sorry, 50th birthday. Ooh. Oh my God. I'm here and she is in number eight school for a, a uh, home and school night. So uh, both of us are missing her birthday. Uh, DPW, fantastic, absolutely fantastic job. Uh, our police and fire get all the accolades a lot of times. They deserve every one of them, if not more. Uh, DPW rarely does. And as Anthony mentioned, uh, I receive most of the complaints, and every once in a while, a compliment slips through my filter somehow. And uh, I always forward them to Bobby. Uh, not only are they acting, not only are they responding, but if they say they're going to get to something in two days, in two days, that resident's emailing me to thank me, and I, of course, forward that to DPW. Uh, they've done a great job. I will be hosting in about two weeks a happy hour for the, for the guys and the women. Uh, it's going to be happy hour with the mayor just to thank them. And obviously, I know you've already spread that word. So they've done a fantastic job. FEMA has declared us a major disaster area. Links are on our township website. Registration is now open for fall recreation sports. Uh, if case you missed it, on Sunday, August 22nd, Belleville was featured in the Sunday print edition of the New York Times. That went international. People in Europe and other continents were reading it and commenting on it. I urge you all to Google Belleville, New Jersey, New York Times, and you'll have a chance to actually read that for yourselves. Uh, in the aftermath of the storm, I did tour many neighborhoods that were flooded. 
I, was, I hit every major flooding neighborhood probably. You've seen my post. You know that Bridgebrook lost 200 cars. You'll also know that it's very difficult to find rentals these days. You'll know people on fairway had six, seven, or eight feet of water in their basement into one or two feet into the first floor. Uh, it was just troubling. I went to Suzanne Court. I went down the Valley section. I was in Silver Lake. Uh, it was really bad, and I think that we all did a great job. And I have to say, the residents overwhelmingly were understanding that usually I show up and I get yelled at, uh, and they, they're angry. They just want to take it out on somebody. And uh, I have to say that th there was a little bit of that, but the people actually knew that this was a difficult situation, and they all acknowledged every single one of our departments that stepped up. Uh, I did not usually big snowstorms myself and Anthony ride along with the police or DPW. I've ridden along with Bobby. This was such a major storm. I did not want to be in the way. I, I just didn't want to interfere with anybody at all. Uh, so I spent the night listening to my radio scanner and, and uh, I've shared with the chief the calls on the police radio alone about people being potentially swept away, uh, hearing them shout that we need boats, hearing them scream at a woman and nine month old baby trying to climb out of the roof of their car to stay put hearing them or that they've located two people hanging onto trees on Mill Street and ordering them to stay still. DPW coming to the rescue of police cars that are stuck. DPW using backhoes to break windows in cars. Uh, that's what we heard and I really do, I did, I did share this on social media, but I really do wish the general public could have actually heard some of that and, and, and understood exactly what we were dealing with. And I'll add this, by the way, amidst all that, amidst all the calls, I also heard calls for domestic violence, uh, which our police then had to stop rescuing people and go and, and be, uh, not that we're making light of domestic violence at all, but they had to actually then still put on their, their badges and go into people's houses and do what they do in a domestic violence call when we had people literally floating down the street. Uh, so you, you heard all that. And again, I commend police, fire, and of course DPW that were called into emergency service. Have you ever broken a, a window with a backhoe before? Uh, you know, th this was the <laughs> stuff that was actually happening. And uh, again, I can't commend them enough. I'm going to end my mayor's report speaking about the storm with just an interesting story. Uh, I received an email. It's only a couple sentences. Uh, the subject is floods on Continental and Fairway Avenue. Good morning, Mr. Mayor. I have a nice story about our neighborhood. Neighbors who rescued my father from floods on Continental Avenue. My father fell underwater three times. He's 81 years old. Wow. A woman spotted him and her husband and a friend literally saved my father's life. They got him out of the water and they walked him home all the way to our home on Fairway. With all the bad news going on, I felt it was a nice story and I want to share with you. It would be great to see them recognized. I've already reached out and we're already in talks for them. Uh, but that, that's a serious thing, but it's a nice story, but I'm just going to make light of it for one second because there's been a follow-up to this story. Uh, I've since learned from the family that the old man who's doing great, he's 81 years old, he's doing great, when he initially fell in the water, he lost his teeth. His <laughs> teeth fell out. Interestingly, the next day, his teeth were found on a different block. <laughs> on, I'm sorry, a different street. So not only did he fall in the water and he lost his teeth, but his teeth were actually recovered the next day teeth on a recovered. different street. Uh, so I end my mayor's report with that. Uh, next item on our agenda is committee reports. I see Councilman Graziano already has something on. Councilman? Yes, thank you, Mayor. I just would like to share with everybody um, that we um, are now in another phase of technology. As you know, uh, over the past two years, three years, we updated and uh, we upgraded all uh, desktops, laptops for all of the employees at each one of our locations. Um, we went ahead and we uh, upgraded our network to an MPLS network. Uh, we cut over uh, all of the sites except we're just finishing up on the fire, uh, the fire headquarters. We just have to put something up in the cloud there. But now we're in another phase of joining or bringing together our voice component, which is our phones. What that means, what does that mean? Um, right now, every one of our locations are on their own phone system. And to dial each phone, to dial each unit, if you will, DPW to town, to fire, whatever, you have to dial all nine digits. That is going to change. Uh, right now, we, uh, we, we put hardware in for uh, the firehouse and DPW. Uh, it's cut over. Uh, it's added to the network as of today. We are going to, in 2022, 
we're going to be uh, going ahead and get the rest of our buildings, which, which will do what? It's going to give us four or five digit dialing so they don't have to dial those nine digits. And it's also going to be uh, put us in a position to where we can actually record all calls uh, if need be. And that'll be up to the town manager, whatever policy we put in place. Uh, so we are moving. We are moving ahead. Uh, we've made a lot of progress, as you can tell here, technology. Uh, and I think uh, we're in a, I, I know we're in a really good place as we are today. So if anybody, council, had any questions, you're more than welcome to ask. But I, I just had one quick question. It seems like we're, we're getting more stable here with, with what's going on here. Are, are we able to do a hybrid meeting yet, or we're kind of still working on that, where we can come in and, and do the Zoom and do you know, other stuff? Just in case, I mean, for me, I'm, I'm probably going to start traveling again, and I want to be able to at least attend a meeting if I'm, you know, if I'm out there. I don't, the, uh, to answer your question, in my opinion, no, only because these, this was all, the audio video upgrades were all planned, obviously, prior to COVID, oh, right. and we didn't even think that we would have to have a hybrid. I'm sure it can be done. It might take a minimal additional investment, but I'm sure it could be done. If, if, it's, if it's something we need to, if we need to look at after we something talk, we should look, we at, should look at, but it will be additional, because what we did is like the mayor said. So, Mm -hmm. And I do agree. I think we are very, I think everybody likes the edit functionality Looking that better. we provide. So that is my technology update. Anybody else? Committee reports, first time in a month. Uh, anybody that's got something to say, something that they've been working on, pet projects, and they've been up to, now's your chance? No? Just, uh, just one thing, Mayor. Um, along the same lines as the uh, PBA softball game, they're also hosting, the same group is also hosting a community softball game on Friday, I think, Jackie. What was it? Uh, do you remember what time she Friday, said? Friday, 6 o'clock. Friday, 6 o'clock. Do you uh, remember where? School number 8. It's At school 8. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I think all community people are welcome to come and play the... Play and see. Mm -hmm. I guess they're going to play the Puerto Rico State team. And yep. Yes. See if anyone could beat them. Yeah. Yeah. Good. We yeah, actually beat them in the second game. I know. I, know. I heard. They had their C squad in, but yeah, <laughs> and we that was gave the them bad the boy and like the, the mom and the dad. Uh, right before here. we move on to pro minutes, one other comment. I did mention the fact that uh, Bridgebrook lost 200 vehicles and access to rentals is very difficult. I do want to thank our partners in the Board of Education. Uh, Dr. Tomko immediately stepped up and said, whatever you need. I said, we have a need. We need buses. And uh, we didn't want to take necessarily our CDL drivers. So Dr. Tomko immediately, I think Tuesday after Labor Day, uh, provided transportation for everybody to and from uh, supermarkets. So again, thank you, our friends on the Board of Education. Uh, next, we're finally the clerk's going to have some work to do. Next item on the agenda: approval of minutes. Combined conference and regular meeting of February twenty third, twenty twenty one. Make a motion. Second. second. We have a motion made and second. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. De Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Ravel. Yes. Shumula Burke. Yes. Mayor Melham. Yes. Next item is communications. A letter received from Fire Chief John Oliveira commending the members of the Belleville Fire Department on their professionalism and bravery during the storm of September 1st, 2021. A letter of thanks sent to John Mason for his generous donations to the Township of Two Albums showing the life of Township resident Henry J. Mason Jr. Thanks. while serving our country during World War II. Request received from the residents of Carpenter Street to conduct a block party on Sunday, November 7th, 2021 from 12 p.m. to 5 p.m. Request received from River of Life Church for permission to conduct an outdoor service on Sunday, October 10th, 2021 from 9.30 a.m. to 2.30 p.m. on Horblower Avenue between Home Street and Clearman Place. Should we pull it? I'm going to pull it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Those requests for block parties are always forwarded to the Police Department Traffic Division. Mm -hmm. And uh, thank you, Chief Oliveri, for your letter uh, advising us, you know, what your team men went through and, and everything they accomplished. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, I have taken the opportunity to look through that book in the clerk's office. It's quite interesting to see letters written from somebody yeah. overseas fighting a war. Five years uh, very interesting. Okay, next item on our agenda is ordinances. Ordinances for introduction. In order to amend the revised general ordinances of the Township of Belleville, Chapter 8 through 16, handicapped parking spaces. Make a motion to introduce. Second it. We have a motion made. Second for introduction. Clerk, call the roll. Councilmember Casarelli. Yes. De Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Ravel. Yes. Strumilleberg. Yes. Mayor Maham. Yes. An ordinance to amend ordinance number. 3490, creating permanent positions and adopting reclassifications and compensation plans. Motion introduced. Set. Motion made and second for introduction. Clerk, call the roll. 
Council Member Casarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graciano? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Schimmelberg? Yes. Mayor Malham? Yes. Okay, we're moving on. Next item, I need a motion to open public commenting. Move a motion. Second. We have a motion made and second to open public commenting. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli? Yes. DePena? Yes. Graciano? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Schimmelberg? Yes. Mayor Malham? Yes. Okay, we're at the portion of the meeting for public commenting. I will invite anybody interested in speaking to please come forward, state your name and address for the record. Residents have five minutes to speak on a topic they may have heard today or anything they want to discuss. The weather, mm -hmm. chief suit maybe. <laughs> I, like that. I like that, Chief. <laughs> Mr. Frank Antoni. Just make sure that mic is on, please, sir. I, yeah, I believe it is. Double check. Just tap it. I see a red light flashing. Push it up. Get in. Wait a second. There. You got it. It's the worst thing about cordless mics. We'll give him your mic, Aunt. Okay. You can share with Councilman Ravel. He's done talking. You're done. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Yes, um, yeah. I, uh, at the beginning of the meeting, I showed the Mayor and Councilman and the Town Manager a picture. Uh, you, last week, you paved Valley Street. Uh, a couple of meetings ago, I told you that we're using the cheapest grade of asphalt with the big stones. It don't hold up. After a couple of years, the water gets in those crevices, freezes, and pops it up. I showed you the picture, Mr. Mayor. My printer was broken, so I couldn't print it out. I will get it. But it's so big, I think the next grade will probably be three-quarter inch gravel. I mean, this is unacceptable. And, and you know, now what are we doing? Who's drawing up these specs for these things there? Washington Avenue. The state held the meeting here a couple of years ago. They're going to do one lane needed direction. Is that still on? I have called, my wife keeps calling down there to protest this. You people got to take some action. I've been taking pictures. We can't have one lane in each direction. Just this morning, we're coming back from shopping up by uh, the um, uh, Jiffy Lou, the liquor store, is getting a delivery with a giant truck. Across the street, the pet supply, whatever it is, is another tractor trail. I got two. You can't move. Next to my laundry, he, that uh, restaurant is doing a great business. He gets six, eight, ten deliveries in a row. He gets bags of rice. They're there 20, 25 minutes unloading. What do we do when we got one lane of traffic? It's a disaster. Um, last Friday, my wife and I went to Jersey City shopping for a washing machine. And on the way home, the traffic is horrendous at 4.30. From Schuyler Avenue, Belleville Avenue, 23 minutes to get to Washington Avenue. There's, you know, we keep building these human cages in Bloomfield and Montclair, and now we're in Belleville and all that, and nobody's except, because you can't expand the infrastructure. I've been saying this for years. People don't realize Belleville is almost a landlocked community. Only two ways to get across the river, the Park Avenue Bridge in Nutley or our bridge. We can't handle this traffic. Try to get out of my 54 years. I used to be able to go out my prospect there and out to Bell Avenue. You can't get out there anymore. In the morning and afternoon, impossible to get out there. Uh, parking on Mount Prospect Avenue, I'll bring it to the chief privately later. But it's around town, but my street, this guy parks across the sidewalk, right up to his garage door, almost all day and every night. There's one lady who walks her grandkids has to go out in the street with the carriage, day or night. Um, in regards to this flooding, I was uh, 18 years a trustee of the Passaic River Coalition. I was the Belleville liaison to keep track of it. And in just one seven year period, all the building that was done, we had calculated over 1.7 acres of Belleville through development of two family house apartments was paved over. We're losing our pervious areas. Now it's getting worse. This flooding, there was just a report out, and uh, number one, 
I um, been yelling about basement apartments. I gave Mr. Iacona the warning. I hope you put it in the tax bill by uh, the way our online budget, it's now September, we still don't have uh, a tax bill. But the, uh, we keep paving over. Washington and Williams, every square inch up to the sidewalk is there. When I asked to consult the architect, where's the pervious area? Oh, with her pointer, she had a look of way up on top of the plot plan was about a half inch of green, right? We keep losing our purge. So these floods, yes, we might be getting more rainfall, but I doubt it because I cut a newspaper article. We've had greater floods in 1897 and, and different areas and all. The reason we have more damage, more billions of dollars damage, because we have put more buildings and people in those flood areas. I and the Passaic River Coalition and others fought the Passaic River flood tunnel because they, they wanted to bring the water from Wayne and Lincoln Park down to us, right? We're, we're successful in defeating that. But you got you, you to gotta stop all these things. Thank you, Mr. Vance. And you need to 80%, up. right, finally, 80% of all the deaths in these floods were from illegal basement apartments. I don't know if you heard the report, it's been on TV, it's been in the newspapers. Are we going to start to crack down these basement apartments? They're all over town. And attic apartments. East Orange, nine people died in a fire in an attic apartment. Illegal attic apartment. They couldn't get out, attic fire in the hallway, they couldn't get out. We have illegal attic and basement apartments. Are we going to wait for the newspaper to publicize the deaths? Or are we going to take some serious action on that? And the one action in that tax bill put out a strong, strong, not that little half inch, inch and a half inch piece of paper you put out the last time. I gave Iacono a, a, a eight and a half by 11 red letters, warning, illegal apartments. And let's prosecute some of these people and publicize it okay, before you, we have debts in illegal apartments. Thank, thank you. I don't disagree with you at all with the legal apartments and the in the attics for sure. Uh, the park uh, paving specs, Anthony. I'm sure you look into that. I'm sure uh, Tom Harris types the specs. One, we got to make sure that the specs are correct, and two, we got to make sure that that's actually actually what we're getting from the contractors. Uh, and Mr. Fran Antonio, it's called road dieting. Uh, I'm not a fan of it. We're going from four lanes down to three. We're including massive amounts of square footage for bike lanes and everything else. It's called road dieting. I'm not a fan of it. Uh, we had, did have a public hearing here uh, a couple years back. Uh, it is on schedule, I think. Now they pushed it back to 2024, but I will continue to voice my objection to it. Anybody else? Public commenting. Sure. Vic Mifuchi, 61 Continental Avenue. Uh, I'm trying to read my scribble. As far as the concerts were concerned, uh, kudos to mayor and council, the police, DPW, fire if they were involved, and the Board of Ed. It was, they were terrific. I wasn't able to attend all of them, but the ones I did were very good. And I, yes, I would like to see it again. Oh, and the sponsors. Mm -hmm. uh, Most importantly. As far as the hurricane and the flooding, again, Props out to the police, fire, and especially DPW. I had minimal water compared to my neighbors right across the mm -hmm. street. So for that, I'm thankful. Uh, the system where you could go online and uh, put a comment in, do I eventually get something back? You absolutely should get a, a, a confirmation that we've received it and that it's either open or closed. If you call me in the office tomorrow, I'll go online and okay. see. Mine's, in view of everything, mine's not important. I just have a no, but dead street tree. Like, no, it's, it's an automatic response to the minute that the department looked at it, and you should get a request. So I, I'd like to take a look at it. Okay. I uh, had just put it in, and right away got a response. Thank you for submitting it. Oh, yeah. You have the auto, auto acknowledgement that he sent it. it. He don't know the status. Right. So it's not closed yet, maybe. Okay. So you're looking okay. for the result. Again, in view of everything, 
Got it. One little dead tree. Sure. You know. Uh, also, I think it would be a great service to the public in the future if you could also live feed the planning board and zoning board meetings. We did one already for the planning board. We're, as Councilman Ravel mentioned before, we're really close to having all the kinks worked out now. And I do think that would be a, a responsibility of our planning board and zoning board secretaries to make sure they know how to get it up and running. But that's we did live stream one or two already. Plus, in one part, they're probably just as important as sure. this meeting. Of course, cool. a lot goes on there. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Through the chair real quick. Vic, Vic, just a real quick question for you. I know that the base there where it comes down off the car for period of content is about flooded again. Right? Oh, yeah. That, yeah. It just overwhelms yeah. that part. Max House, Jones House, they all got it. Yeah. Including their cars, and uh, yeah, I, I agree with your comments about the, the concert. I, I will say that when we unfortunately had canceled the Fourth of July, uh, the manager actually rolled up his sleeves. And uh, a lot of towns use outside promoters, and it takes a while. Uh, Bevel was very unique that I guess his office directly engaged every single one and organized that it. it was a it was a good job. I think, Mr. Manager. Next. Mario. Mario Draz, 95 Bell Street. Um, I was listening to the conversation about the uh, construction code official and then about his duties, so which, which reminded me of a contract that you approved for the banker group. Does he do the same thing, or is that separately? Because if I remember the contract, he's supposed to be reviewing or dealing with the uh, Developers, so or we have two people doing the same thing? No. Okay, then this is that question. All right, on the uh, bill list, it's no longer on the uh, online, but I did notice that the O'Connor Law Firm, which is a labor law firm, they've been paid thirty-eight thousand dollars in the last three months for legal fees. Is there any reason for that? Oh, let me go on. Okay. You can answer that later for me. Okay. Is the, and the other question I have, is the Belleville Fire Department fully staffed? Because I know we had a lot of retirements. And uh, I don't know if this is true or not. As we know, I'm just asking Probably the question. Not. Is, is, was there a list for the fire department and it was uh, thrown out and they're starting all over? Is there any reason for that? If it was true, we'll get an answer. Well, I'm going to answer later. No, no, no. You can I'm give me your questions. I'm just using five minutes right now. Okay. I mean, I'm, I'm writing down your questions. Yeah, I know you are. Okay, so I'm just wondering why that list was dismissed if it was. Uh, vaccinations. I'm concerned about vaccination. When I walk in a town hall, I don't know who here is vaccinated, who up there is not vaccinated. Nor is it. The reason I'm bringing it up is I don't want to be near you if you're not vaccinated. None of your business. So, so you're not vaccinated. I know None of that. your business, my status. I know, but I'm just telling you, if you are, I'm asking you to stay away from me. Okay. If, I noticed that if the, I am vaccinated, stay away from you. If you are not vaccinated, stay away from me. Got it. I want to keep you six feet away from sure. me. Okay. Um, I noticed that the two developments here, there's a total of uh, two bedrooms, 107 units, 28 units. Uh, and I don't know how many more. I, I didn't go through everything yet, but they're going to impact our school system, as I have mentioned in, in the past. And the last thing I have here is a number of times at the beginning of the year, in January and February, I've asked if uh, why the town wouldn't put a resolution uh, about the insurrection of January 6th at the Capitol. Someone told me, I don't know if this is true, these are only allegations. Usually those aren't true. No. I don't know. I'm, I'm only asking. That's for all I'm doing is asking. That uh, the reason for that is, well, I was told, I didn't even know it, that uh, Councilman Casarelli is the Republican chair in town. And uh, I also understand that uh, supposedly, allegedly, a former or a current employee was down in Washington. I don't know if that's true or not. Not so, a crime. Less I'm just like wondering that. if you're protect. I'm almost this my last sentence. I'm just wondering if you're protecting this person and you don't want the public to know about it. So that only brings me to the one question. Do you really believe the president 
Biden is the president of the United States legally? Yes, he's the president of the United States. I'll answer the rest of the question. I'm glad. I'm, I'm glad you're giving me an honest answer. There's a reason why the insurrection resolution has never. I'm answering, so your time is done now? I'm okay. Done. So there is a reason why the insurrection resolution was never on the council's agenda, because nobody here, nobody here ever put it on, Mario. That's that question. Uh, development schools, we're going to disagree with that forever. Uh, Harrison has built 3,000 more units in the last eight to 10 years and lost children in their school district. Uh, vaccine status of anybody's, none of anybody else's business, in my opinion. Uh, Anthony, I have no idea what the question was or how to answer the fire department question. We are a civil service community, and civil service dictates to us. So they give us a list, they tell us how long the list is. The norm is three years. The list sometimes gets extended for reasons of elected pandemic. The list expires when they say it expires. Normally it's three years and it's an automatic, but because of the pandemic, they have extended certain lists. So there is, to answer your question, we only have one list. Has not expired yet, based on the fact that there's an extension. But um, tomorrow morning, the civil call. service can call for the new test, and at that time, there will be a new list, and that old list is no longer. Thank you, Mr. Manager. So the. The resolution 15, let's get what is that? Is that police? That's cool. Yes. Yes. Uh, and lastly, you mentioned, um, I can see that you and Councilman Ravel are on the same page with this law firm for $38,000. Councilman Ravel mentioned it earlier, even though, even though it was privileged, even though it was an executive session, even though it was supposed to stay uh, private between us, Councilman Ravel did mention it in public before, about $38,000. So therefore, I can speak about it publicly, which is something I've always wanted to do. So I was accused of creating a hostile work environment from a specific employee. That accusation against me was forwarded to the township manager, our legal counsel. They decided to thoroughly investigate the claim as I would not have any other way to do that. They thoroughly investigated the claim by hiring an outside third party law firm. That law firm, you're correct, cost us about thirty-eight to forty thousand dollars. And at the end of the day, I was not found. I was found to not have created a hostile work environment. So $40,000 of taxpayer money was wasted on an accusation that was thoroughly investigated by this township. And I was proven to not be guilty of creating a hostile work environment. $30,000, $38,000 lost of your taxpayer money because of an accusation that we took very seriously and we thoroughly investigated outside of this administration with an outside law firm cost us $40,000 of your money to show and to prove that I did not create a hostile work environment. Anybody else? Sir? Santos Martinez. I, I do need you to come forward, sir, so you're on the microphone. Yeah, yeah, so I need you on the microphone. All right, so several things. I don't know if we have the capability. Of I'm sorry, your address, sir? Oh, 297 Belmont Avenue. I don't know if we have the capability of doing it, but I, it's that serious of an issue um, that now that I'm home more, more often, I'm starting to see we have a serious speed problem and our, our cars speeding up our block. Like once they make that turn, I'm, and I said this in the last meeting, do we have the capability of setting up a speed trap? Because when they make that turn, they set my camera off from the vibration of them zooming by because they step on it and they're gone. And they, now school's open. So now, if we don't have, I, like, I'm not sure, I don't know if you can answer this, but the Board of Ed, I know I started to see now, they have safety services um, huh. vehicles that they drive around, the same uh, baking models of, like, of the Belleville cars. I don't know if, uh, I don't know what their responsibility is, but maybe that's something that we need to bring up there, because uh, do we have to give you a setting of a speed trap? Is that possible? We know, but a, a concern like this would can normally just go straight to the police department. The chief yes. would task our traffic department it's one just, it's, it's, with I'm, that responsibility. I'm you, it's continuous and it's crazy. Like these kids fly up the block. I mean, I don't but know. All, all, all we're doing now is making sure the chief is hearing okay. your concerns. If you want to just cool. contact the police department direct and we'll not wait two weeks for another meeting, you can certainly do that. All right, that's, that's great. That's okay, what they would know. do. Thank you. And then the other thing is, um, you know, our street got flooded pretty bad right there in the corner. So I helped out, me and another neighbor of mine helped out a lot of residents in the area <laughs> pumping out their basements whatever but um is there any way that the street itself because i think the police can attest to this but there are a lot more unintelligent people on this planet than intelligent people so the problem is that they see a flood of water and no matter how many times they are warned not to drive through it 
Then they think they can gun through it. So what they did is as our streets got flooded and our basements got flooded, these absolute idiots pushed the water. I have video of it. Pushed the water up the block and made it even worse. Mm. So in a time like this, and, you know, is there any way we can close that street? Because that corner is susceptible to flooding. So I don't know if there's any way we can do that. I don't know how we could do it. If we could put it in our shirt pockets and think about it and get back to that and, and see, that would be really I do hard. know that we, we do use DPW and police to close streets. Okay. Again, in a storm like that, a flood, I know, I, flood, listen, I, it's a matter, it's a matter of, it. eventually we do close them. It's just a matter of deploying resources right, right, right. quickly and, and efficiently. It's, right. it's, it was, it was, I agree with know, you. I'm sure it was bad everywhere. I'm not, you know, the only one crying about this, but, um, the payment procedures I heard going on earlier, it sounds like to me it should be regular SOPs. Like, what, why, why are we reinventing a wheel? I don't, it should be like a normal accounting procedure. I worked in an office before. What's like so, like, we all sound like we're all like confused. I think there's reasons why people. There's an invoice, someone approves it, someone reviews it, someone puts it in for processing, it gets reviewed, and then it gets paid. No, I mean, uh, call me crazy. That's normal. However, when there's an invoice, when there's an invoice submitted that shouldn't be submitted, and that's paid out. That's what I'm saying. That should be rejected immediately. And like then, verify if they said it is six hours of work. Somebody who has the expertise should know. Does it take six hours to survey this property, or should it really take for a backyard an hour? Right. You know. So like we have to also like I hope that's being done, and I don't know if it's being done for every department. The but procedures. We're inventing a wheel here. The procedures <laughs> important. More importantly, is the immediately stopping of employees that are doing that incorrectly yeah because you know because in my experience when things are vague there's very shady not vague, you know, black and white you know but i'm saying so there's statues out there that are vague is very Agree open for you know uh, issues uh real quick also um there was a, a, a resident i mean a, a, ten, a neighbor of mine that their basement got flooded everything got flooded. real quick i don't know if the town can force one of the owners of the property adjacent property because his backyard is like a pool mm -hmm. and it c retains all the water. Then when it starts to drain, it affects his, the adjacent neighbors and it floods their basement. Is there any way the town can force him to provide pumps in his yard to, to drain his yard? Um, that I'm not sure of, but I'm sure between could I, could I check the engineering with the department or the construction code department, I would be able to know. I'll check with him. Okay, uh, last thing. Uh, the friendly house. Okay. So I helped Miss Burke about two months ago. She had difficulty getting inside. She was passing by our neighborhood and we said, hello, whatever. She told us, long story short, we went over there, found a couple of very interesting situations. So one, I think we really need to look at this tomorrow, tomorrow, because we have some very serious issues there. One, the back door to the friendly house does not close. So anybody can get into this property. Okay, homeless people, crazy people, whatever. The door does not close. That's the one. Let's not say it, you know. On <laughs> okay, you know, 100 people could do it. That's probably something you should well, probably whatever. Cheese, right? Right? So, yeah, so yeah. that's what I'm saying. Tomorrow, yeah. let's fix it. Don't wait a week later to fix it. Fix it now. But, but you can call just so you know. You don't have okay. to wait two weeks for another council meeting. You can right. So call, you that, can call Miss Burke. That was going to be my, the ending question. Like, what do I do when I see something like that? You can go to Miss Burke yeah. if you'd like, or you can just, he's manager's very manager, accessible. Perfect. That's Email all. And, and on phone. Because there's accessible. like a couple of issues there. So you know what? I'll call you tomorrow morning, if possible. Call or email. He's and very accessible. Because there's like, um, there was some open uh, electrical boxes that are not locked. And they're supposed to be locked by code where kids can open that and yeah, touch we don't it. Wanna, we don't want to wait on that stuff. We're talking about 240 volt items that somebody touches it. They're not, it's not a, it's not a zing. It's dead. You're dead. Uh, so I think there's some serious issues. I have pictures and stuff you want. Well, I'll share with you gladly. So thank you. I'm texting the uh, supervisor now. Come here. So we'll talk tomorrow, and then I'll give you more. Talk tomorrow, but if you want, by all means, give me a call. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Thank okay. You. Appreciate. Thank you. it. Thank you. Anybody else? Public commenting, sir. I'm Christopher Kondrak, three 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 Ralph Street. Mm -hmm. I understand that uh, you're going to be developing. The fields at nine school down around my house upgrading the fields uh, yeah and you know, my house is surrounded by these fields on two sides i know nothing about this and until this morning i saw the bulldozer in my backyard uh, i put in a call to your office three weeks ago uh, i haven't received any word back is there somewhere i can see a site plan of what's going on down there i went on the websites for the town there's nothing i called the department of public works they have no idea called Board of Education. Manager has that. They have no idea. 
You're going to call me tomorrow. I'm going to track that down it, and I'll email it to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Anybody else? Seeing none, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to close public hearing. We have one more comment. Uh, oh, oh. Read the one. thank oh. you. I, I missed that one. Read that one. Um, Alice Gasboro, 144 Academy Street. Please read at the public portion of the next council meeting. To the members of the Belleville, New Jersey Council, please be advised that on August 17, 2021, I ask each of you to address the parking issue on Academy Street, whereby Captain Condrick of the Belleville, New Jersey Police Department cites as the reason for his police department's lack of interest in enforcing the, law, the laws that prevent harassing innocent citizens within the township of Belleville, which will curtail St. Mary's, St. Mercurius Coptic Church, Clientels unwarranted, unwelcome, and alarming behavior against my family and myself arising whenever visitors to this organization refuse to move his or her illegal parked motor vehicle from across the front of my driveway when asked to do so. Since the Belleville, since the Belleville New Jersey Police Chief Mark Minichini has seen fit to lock and bolt the police department's doors against my family and myself in this matter by asking that we seek a remedy for the crime of harassment elsewhere. And given the fact that each council member has failed to do as I had previously asked you to do, I would like to once more request that this issue of parking that promotes such hostile behavior toward innocent members within your community by visitors to a religious establishment which has its own parking lot, yet illegally park across the front of someone's driveway to threaten the safety of children by refusing to move his or her vehicle addressed and resolved at the next Belleville, New Jersey Council meeting. Let me say once again, it must be distinctly understood that with each incident of harassment by this Coptic church visitors, the threat to the life and limb increases, which places an inordinate amount of stress upon my family who are no longer under the protection of the law and forced division of Belleville, whereby cases of harassment are to be reported. That's it. Okay. Would you like to respond? Since yeah. you're you were specifically mentioned, if you'd oh, like to respond. Yes. Even last meeting, Mr. Gaspar was here. Uh, we, this was spoken about last time, Mr. Mayor. Um, I've been in contact with Mr. Gaspar since June, maybe even before that, on the phone, spoke to him many times. Um, I referred him to one of my police captains, <clears throat> and here's was the uh, he spoke to him, and then here's the letter he sent to Mr. Gasparo. I have been briefed with your ongoing concerns regarding the alleged harassment of you and your family at the behest of St. Mary and St. Mercurius Coptic Church and their members located at 125 Academy Street. I am also aware that you spoke with Captain Kondrak. He even addresses that at great lengths regarding this issue where he has personally as well as had patrol officers keep a continuous check of your home, 144 Academy Street, and the Coptic Church for any parking violations. Our supervisors also spoke with church leadership who assured us that they will make attempts by notifying their congregation to not block any residential driveways along Academy Street to address the concerns of their fellow residents. I will request that any time you feel you're being harassed by a vehicle blocking your driveway to please contact the police desk 973-450-3333 or 911 if it is an emergency as opposed to engaging with the driver or members themselves. As for your feelings of being harassed by a member slash members of this church on June 6th and June 27th, respectively, I can have an officer come to you to gather all the pertinent information to complete a harassment incident report, or you can complete an incident report online by going to our department website at blah, blah, blah. Okay? Once you have decided your preference on documenting these incidents and these reports are completed, you can then contact the Belmont Municipal Court and they post, post the hours, 8 to 3.30, and gives the telephone number, 450-3319, and request and attempt to sign a criminal complaint for harassment against those that you believe are harassing you. Furthermore, you have also have the right to retain a lawyer and attempt to sue the church civilly as well if that is an avenue to which you would like to explore. If you have any further questions or concerns, please do not hesitate to contact Captain Contract or I. Thank you and have a great day. Sincerely, Captain Christopher Shrimp. 
Okay, so these issues are being addressed. He was advised on how to proceed respectfully in accordance with the law. And is the, you know. Sounds good to me. Okay. Thank you, Chief, for that. Through the chair, the Motion. Chief. I just had a quick question. Mark, I, I, I remember they were trying to put parking in over there, but whatever happened with that? Against, that, against, against putting parking, there. parking deck we, we'll that park would have helped. How's that? Deck. Right. How's that? that would have helped. We, just, we just want that on the right. record. The library was, yeah, 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 and he was against it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Great. I need a motion to close. Motion to close public hearing. Second. Motion made. Second. Close public hearing. Clerk, call the roll. Sorry. Councilmember Casarelli. Yes. De Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Rovell. Yes. Shirley Burke. Yes. Mayor Mohan. <laughs> yes. Uh, consent agenda item thirteen. I'd like to pull off, please. I'd like to pull 14 and 16 as well. Seeing none, hearing no else. You need a motion? I will need a, you need a motion to, for the consent agenda. Wait, Marie. You good, Marie? Yeah. Good. Yeah. Uh, motion to move the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Motion made and second to move the consent agenda. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. De Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Jamula Burke? Yes. Mayor Malham? Yes. Resolution 13, just a roll call vote, please. Motion. You want a motion? Motion move 13. Okay. Motion made and second for roll call for 13. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. De Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Ravel? Yes. Trumula Burke? Yes. No. Mayor Mohan? Abstain. Uh, resolution 14, let's do them together. Steve. Make a motion to move 14. Second it. I, I just wanted to say, you know, Tom was a great guy, and I'm glad that Vinny was able to honor him because he was just fantastic for all of us. And, uh, Definitely. You know, let's just pray for his family. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Okay. Anybody else? Nope. No? no? Clerk of the roll. Council Member Casarelli? Yes. De Pena? Yes. Graziano? Yes. Natori? I'm sorry. Oops. Ravel? Yes. Trimble the Burke? Yes. Say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Mayor Mohem? Item 16. Motion? Yeah, motion to move 16. Second it. Motion made and second yeah, discussion. I, I just wanted to, you know, mention that, you know, Mike was a great uh, cop and uh, mm. he lost his life and, he, he, you know, not that anybody has to have anything named after him, but he should. So. Yep. I know uh, I knew Mike a long time. I Good know guy. Phyllis a long time. Good guy. Glad we're able to do this. Clerk, call the roll. Council Member Casarelli. Yes. De Pena. Yes. Graziano. Yes. Ravel. Yes. Strumola Burke. Yes. Mayor Mohem. <clears throat> yes. New business? Well, I have some new business. I would like to also commend our fire department, our police department, and our public works men. They did a phenomenal job. I lost my half of my home on, on Heckle Street, and loads of those people have nowhere to go, and it's really terrible. <laughs> I would like to have... Um, we're going to have a, a pizza party at the American Legion on Belmont Avenue for the cops, the firemen, and the public works men for all the good work they have done. They, are, they were phenomenal, and uh, I appreciate that very much. That's all I have to say. I, just, <clears throat> I have two quick things. Um, can you check into the possibility of putting a, a, a marine pump at the end of fairway in that injector pump? I don't, I don't know if it's feasible or not, but I know what happens is it usually shuts down that injector pump, which leaves the waste down below, which maybe we want to get rid of before it floods out. Um, the other thing is, you know, I want to echo what Marie's saying. We need to thank the police, fire, and DPW. They did a phenomenal job. I also want to thank, you know, Joe DiVincenzo for getting us FEMA, because originally FEMA had ignored us. That's and right. I, I think sure that's, did. that's horrendous, but thank God for Joe and... and uh, the commissioners. Yeah. Anyway, I'm good. good. I got one more thing. Go um, yes, uh, I'll address an earlier comment. I am the Republican chair of Belleville. That's not something I was hiding. I'm very proud of it. Uh, in fact, the last couple years, we did um, little fundraisers to, we collected, mm -hmm. I'm going to say hundreds of toys at this point, and uh, delivered them to Belleville families and kids in the hospital. And I think most of the people in this room actually attended that uh, and are proud to attend it and donate to it. So Always. I don't think anyone's really, Even as Democrats. you know, hiding about that. Being a member of a political came. party is not a bad thing in Belleville. Yeah, exactly. So motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 We are adjourned. <laughs>